Friends. Oh, a shot to go for Jackson Jennings. Puck tapped in by Paul Camp and the Beavers win. Time now in our pregame show to visit with Tom Serratori, the head coach of the Beavers. Kyle Wolf, Eric Polkamp, Leighton Road, Matias Scholl, all named first team, all CCHA this week, Tom. First time the Beavers have ever had four guys uh, on, on a first team. Uh, you had three back in 2010. That was Dan Bakla, Brad Hunt, and Matt Reed. That was a pretty darn good team. Uh, pretty good company for this year's group to be in. As a head coach, what's it mean when you got four guys on a six-man all team? Well, it just means you had success as a team, and uh, you know we won the league. And uh, I think that you know those guys they just they deserved it. They you know they they earned it. And uh, again, I just think that it's all about you know winning a championship and. Uh, you know, the rewards you get for winning a championship. You're going to get guys on, on these all-league teams, and guys are going to get awards. Jackson Judding named the uh, co-defensive forward of the year. A lot of people have asked me, when the heck is that award? Uh, how important is defense for a centerman, and how does that make Jackson Judding the player that he is? Well, it's just accountability. Uh, you know, you, people who are reliable, you know, players you trust, players who can eat minutes. Um, you can put them out there anytime you want, and, again, you feel comfortable. And they also have the ability of chipping an offense too. So I mean, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a good award. Like it's a it's a good award. It's uh, you know no different probably than the Selkie Trophy in the National Hockey League. Kyle Luff named the uh, best defensive defenseman, uh, also the defenseman of the year. How do both of those awards equal what Kyle Luff means to your team? Well, I think it, you know it, it, it's twofold. I mean, Lufty at the end of the day, I mean, he generated a lot of offense this year. He's just a presence when he's on the ice. So he's a big presence. Uh, but you know, he's a plus 14. I mean, he's he's just he's big. He's strong. He's agile. He's he's confident. So I mean, he can defend. I mean, he's a he's a handful. He's a handful out there. So um, statistically, I mean, he fit the the, the, the best defensive defenseman and um, offensively too. I mean, it's just kind it's just kind of that's not going to happen too often where the same guy gets both. But in this particular situation, um, he deserved it. Plus 14 in the league is mind-boggling, the number of minutes that he plays against the guys that he's out there against. Does that number surprise you at all that it's that yeah, high? It is, and uh, you're spot on, Schultz. You know, I think that's what sometimes people don't realize that is that, I mean, like Will Zamolik, I thought had a heck of a year, and he's a minus two, three, four, because um, he's going against ones and twos all the time. It's hard to be a plus defenseman when you're eating up minutes against the opposing team's best players. Matias Schultz named the uh, goalie of the year. He was hurt and out for a while. How did uh, Gavin and Rathen carrying the load there in that spell, uh, and how do those three guys uh, get you through this year the way that they did and get you the success that you did? Well, everybody, everybody, everybody's involved. Everybody's active. Everybody's part of winning a championship, and um, and uh, that's what happened. I mean, Schultz, he was out, I, I don't know, six weeks. Is that what it was, Schultz? Six yeah. weeks? I mean, so, I mean, somebody had to take the net over, and Gavin did at that particular time, and, you know, and, and uh, Razor, he was just, he just, he just, every day, just like he does right now, he works his tail off. He's one of our hardest workers. And uh, guys recognize that too. He's, he's here every day, an hour, hour and a half after practice. And um, he's just, uh, I mean, he's just a very passionate player. And uh, he just, uh, he loves the game. Eric Polkamp was up for rookie of the year. He made it to the all rookie team. You knew he was going to be good before he ever walked on campus. Where did he meet your expectations, and where did he exceed them? Well, I mean, again, we knew exactly what we were getting with Paulie. I mean, it's just at the end of the day, he's a he's a defenseman who's just he, speaking of a handful. He's a handful. He's strong. He can really skate. He's powerful. He shoots the puck extremely well. I mean, he shoots the puck like an NHLer right now, and uh, you know. So I mean, no, and, and I think as the game as the season wore on, the games became slower for him, became easier for him, and he's really comfortable right now. Uh, Sam Morton of Minnesota State won the Player of the Year. He led in almost every category. Was there any other choice other than him? Lufty. You know, I, th I still thought Lufty might get it. I was hoping Lufty would get the trifecta with the defensive <laughs> defenseman, the all-league defenseman, and the player of the year. But it was just, it was a, it was a two-person race between Lufty and, and, and Sam Morton. And you, you know what? And Sam Morton's one heck of a player. I mean, there's no doubt he was, he uh, he was the best forward in our league and uh, he scored a lot of goals. And he's a, he's when he's on the ice, he's a threat all the time. He's got great speed. He makes a lot of plays. He's just a multi-dimensional player, Schultze. More with Coach Territory when we come back. Our pregame show continues here on the Beaver Radio Network. Oh, hello, Italian nightclub from Jimmy John's. 
chow, freshly baked bread piled high with Italian-style meats and provolone. Hey to you too, hand-sliced veggies. Oil and vinegar, oregano and basil, nice to see ya. Am I obsessed with this sandwich? Yes. Should I see someone about that? Probably. Jimmy John's, order online or on the app. For the Beaver Radio Network, I'm Brian Schultz. Beaver men's hockey team will host Lake State in the semifinals this week of the CCHA Mason Cup playoffs, joined by senior Eric Martin. Marty, I'm sure you've been on teams in the past that have been on a hot streak entering the playoffs or at the end of the year. What stood out about this run for this team this year? I mean, I think uh, I think the biggest thing is probably our defensive game. I mean, I think at the start of the year, we were letting in way too many goals, and the penalty kill wasn't great. And I mean, I think even Coach had a meeting the other day and talked about it. Like, I think in the last 10 games, we've only allowed 18 goals. So, you know, when you're allowing the opponent to only score 1.8 goals per game, I mean, you have a good chance of winning a lot of games. Games early, like you said, you, there were a bunch of goals. The series with Lake State, there's been a bunch of goals. Uh, and I don't know if I can remember a year where, you know, a 1 7 matchup, the seventh seeded team has got the better record. What is it about Lake State's game that is so successful for them? I mean, they have a lot of talented forwards. I mean, I mean, up and down their lineup. Uh, even like I was just watching the game on Saturday or on Sunday, the game three against St. Thomas, and like they they just put a pace. I mean, so many of their forwards are just skilled and like offensively gifted. So I mean, it's going to test our defense again. And I mean, we went up to the task so far. So hopefully, we can shut them down again. Uh, since you guys went on this run. All four lines have been productive. What is it about, uh, you know, you and and Leighton and and Kirkland that's been working so well? I think uh, I think our games kind of complement each other a lot. I mean, we all kind of have a different sort of game, and I think the three of us together, uh, we've been playing a lot in the offensive zone, so that's definitely something that I think we all enjoy a lot more. So, I mean, Kirk Kirk's a hell of a player. He, He's really good below the dot, and then Leighton, I mean, his game speaks for himself. He's a shooter. He knows how to play. He's fast, and I think me too. I kind of like to play that game, or you know, we move fast, we transition fast. So I think that the three of us together have really been doing a good job with that. You've had a lot of freshmen who have come up big as well as of late. By this point in the year, they're not really freshmen anymore. But what have you noticed about that group and how they've kind of helped this team along as you guys have gotten hot? Yeah, I mean, I think. Even speaking from my personal experiences, like it's never easy to come in here as a freshman, and I mean it's all it's a lot different than junior hockey, that's for sure. And there's definitely that learning curve that they go through, and I mean I think that all of them have just taken leaps forward throughout the year, and you can see it in their like play too. They're, they're a lot more confident, and it seems like you know like even just like Chids and Jake on that fourth line, like those two have just been working, like playing the right way, playing 200 feet, and I mean Eric's game too. I mean. He does just about everything out there, so I don't think there's not much to say there. But no, I mean, even all of them, even all of them, just like you can just see how much uh, they've grown this year. There's been a lot of energy in this building the last couple of weeks. I'm anticipating a lot of energy this week. How much do you guys feed off of that? 100%. I mean, I think at the start of the year, we didn't have the best crowds for sure. And I mean, we weren't playing that well either, so I don't really blame the fans that much. But. I mean, even just the last like month, maybe it seems like the building's been a lot more packed, and like just you said, like the energy. I mean, after we score a goal, it's just you can feel it in the place, and you can tell the fans are passionate and they want that just as bad as we do. Best of luck. Thank you. Back to our pregame show, part two with head coach Tom Saratori. Back to last week, Tom. Uh, right away in your, your postgame press conference, and, and I think you mentioned it on our postgame interview as well. You're like, man, we won a lot of battles uh, tonight. If you can string one battle to two battles to three battles in a row, you've got a much better chance of scoring, don't you? Well, you, you do, and, uh, and that's what this is. I mean, it's it's just there's there's a lot of 
there's a lot of little battles going on at one time. I mean, it could be the, a battle at the puck. It could be a battle away from the puck. That's the thing. I mean, there's battles. Puck goes to the point. There's a battle in front of the net right there. Somebody's boxing out. Somebody's trying to establish positioning. So uh, this time of year, you, again, whoever wins the most battles typically is going to win the, win the game. Uh, a lot of fans are, are puck focused. I'm puck focused. I, mean, I got to say, who hasn't? Where are they? Uh, as I'm you know, announcing the game. But when you look back at, at film and you're watching stuff away from the puck, are there more battles away from the puck than there are with the puck? Yeah, for sure there are because you're trying to establish positioning. And there's no doubt. It's no different than football. No different than football. It's, you know, everybody's blocking. Everybody's doing something, Schultz. Everybody's got a job to do defensively and offensively. But we, we get focused to where the ball's at and where the ball's going a little bit. But but we're no different than football. Lake State won on uh, Sunday with you know about six seconds left. It's got to give them a, a shot of confidence, a, a shot of adrenaline coming back from a three-game series. How dangerous is a team with confidence in March? Well, everybody's. If you're, if you're playing tonight, you're dangerous. That's it. <laughs> you're playing tonight, you're dangerous. Uh, they play with a ton of pace. Uh, is pace your biggest concern tonight? Yeah, and it, 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 they do. They got good pace and they're strong too. I mean, they 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 they're physically speaking of battles. I mean, they can win a lot of battles. They're physically they they're very strong. They've got one really really potent uh, offensive line. Uh, you know, back in the day, I, I don't think there'd be any doubt that Chris McKelvey's line would uh, be matched up against them tonight if if Chris was still playing. Uh, is the checking line as it, you know used to be called as important with? You know, the, the way that the game is allowed to move a lot more and there, there there's not the clutching and the grabbing. And second part of that is who will you match up against them tonight? Well, I, again, I'm first off, a checking line is important because, again, it's a line that's, that, that you trust, that's reliable, and, uh, you know, you, you do want a checking line. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to match them up with two different lines. I'm not going to get consumed. I think um, sometimes, again, if you get consumed with one line, sometimes what happens, Schultz, your other guys aren't playing as much. So... Um, we've got two lines we wanted to go against. Best of luck. Thank you. Tom Saratori, head coach of the Beavers, starting lineups next right here on the Beaver Radio Network. You know the right move for you. Learn a trade and earn a good living. Northwest Technical College can be the best right move you'll ever make. Get the education and training you need for high-demand, well-paying jobs, working in an office, running your own business, caring for children, and more. Join nearly 1,000 students at Northwest Technical College who are taking the classes they need to move up, not move over. Northwest Technical College. Learn today, earn tomorrow. Tonight's CCHA semifinal matchup features the Lake Superior State Lakers and your Bemidji State University Beavers! Here are tonight's starting lineups. First, our guests from Lake Superior State. In goal, number one, Ethan Langenegger. At defense, number 23, Artem Barshoff. At defense, number six, Ross Rolison. At left wing, number 15, Jared Westcott. At right wing, number 11, Dawson Tritt. And at center, number nine, Connor Milburn. 
The Lakers are coached by head coach Damon Witten. He is assisted by associate head coach Mike York and assistants DJ Goldstein and Vincent Pietrangelo. Final minute here of the second. And Weavers now, now ladies and gentlemen, Cross Anderson presents door. the starting lineup for your Bemidji State University Beavers. In the nets tonight, a junior from Hermosa Beach, California. He's number 30, Matias Scholl. Playing defense, a fifth year senior out of Mankato, Minnesota. Number seven, your captain, Kyle Loft. At defense, a junior from Chaska, Minnesota. Number five, Will Magnuson. At left wing, a freshman from Fredrikstad, Norway, number 28, Casper Magnusson. At right wing, a senior out of Duluth, Minnesota, number 22, Austin Jopi. And your center, a senior from Savage, Minnesota, number 19, your alternate captain, Jackson Jennings. And in his 23rd season, the head coach of your Beavers is Tom Saratori. He is assisted by associate head coach Travis Winter and assistant coaches Andrew McGarra, Brock Kautz, and Joel Wegworth. Those are starting lineups brought to you by Slim's Bar and Grill, voted Bemidji's best burger. Time for our national anthem from Wes's Plumbing and Heating, serving Bemidji since 1964. Call 751-9710 for Wes's Plumbing and Heating. A state pep band under the direction of Ryan Weber. Lineup's done, anthem done. Time for the opening face-off tonight, brought to you by Gazlin Garage Door. If you can't get the garage door up, call Gazlin Garage Door, 556-1517. All-time series, Lake Superior State leads 41, 40, and six. Here in Bemidji, it's the Beavers, 20 wins, 19 losses. There have been three ties. First meeting, December 3rd, 1966. R.H. Bob Peters, first game as the Beaver head coach. Beavers, 3-1 winners that night. Crazy that's coming up on 50 years. No, 60. I'm horrible at math. Quit doing math, this. That was a long time ago. It was a long time ago. Damon Witten's in his ninth year already. He started back in 2014. Because uh, Tom Saratori has been there at the Beavers 23 seasons now. So, with a longer tenured coaching staff. Referees tonight Stephen McKinchak and Rick Nelson, the linesman Patrick Giles and Nick Bradshaw. Beavers in white, trimmed in green, blocked Bemidji State across the chest. Lakers in blue, trimmed in gold and white. Lakers with blue pants and blue helmets. The Lakers will skate from left to right. And Jackson Judding make the draw against Connor Milburn. Already one goofy one in the books here in the CCHA tonight. Michigan Tech advancing. With a four to three win, they scored the game winner, kind of. <laughs> Went off of Maverick Glove and right into the net. 
with nine and a half seconds left in regulation. That means the championship game next Friday is either in Houghton or here, depending on tonight's result. 20 minutes up on the board. Puck is down, Beavers win the draw, and we are underway here tonight. Will Magnuson back behind his own net. The near side wall for Kyle Loaf, launched ahead. Austin Jopi will carry it into the offensive zone. Banks it behind the net. Casper Magnuson rockets it right back behind, jumps the stick of Jopi, picked up there by Evan Bushy. Lakers trying to backhand it out and do. Kyle Loaf will go get it. Lakers a partial line change here. Casper Magnuson carries it in, chips it ahead, jutting a shot blocked by the shin pad there of Harrison Roy. Beavers get it back, Mitch Wolf with a drive. That one caroms off of traffic and goes up over the glass in the near corner. Mitch Wolf been on a tear as of late. A Beavers eight game winning streak. He's got a goal and six assists. Yeah, 12 points on the season for the sophomore from Andover and he and uh, Pole Camp man the blue line together most shifts. Offensive zone face off, left circle. Leighton Road takes the draw. It's controlled by Lake Superior State. John Harrington carries it into the offensive zone. Bothered there by Polkamp. Polkamp on the all-rookie team. Bounced up to the point. Congo with a shot through traffic. It's going to be covered up by Matias Scholl, the first-team all-CCHA goalie and also the goaltender of the year. Bemidji State had four guys on the first team, Biss. Yeah. First time that's ever happened in the Beavers' D1 era. Right. The only time they've had three was 2010. Yeah, that was uh, Matt Reed, Brad Hunt, and Dan Bakula, if I remember correctly. Correct. That was a pretty good team. <laughs> yeah, that was the year after the uh, Frozen Four. Dumped into the offensive zone. Beavers got dumped upon sending it into the offensive zone. Eric Martin keeps the puck alive, gets it back now, blue line middle. Puck bounces off his stick. Shot hits traffic in between the circles. Bouncing puck out to center ice. It's picked up there by Bemidji State. Leighton Road flips it ahead. Carter Jones, Jones, quick two on one. Jones slides it just past the right side post. Beavers get it back, Flamang over to Jones in the right side corner. Jones tied up along the wall. How's that not a penalty? As the Lakers fired up the far wall, that's going to be an icing call on Lake State. 18-17 left first period as the clock ran a few seconds extra. I like what Carter Jones did there on that uh, two-on-one. The defenseman took the shooter coming down the center of the ice, and he tried to make a move and get around the uh, goaltender Langenegger. He just missed. He Oh, shot by Polkamp. Tucked it underneath the bar and in. Beavers lead 1-0. Clean face-off win. Polkamp takes two strides towards the middle of the rink and roofed it. Well, that's what a clean face-off win can do. It didn't take long. Drop of the puck, back of the net. Beavers up by one. Tom Saratori said in the pregame interview, he shoots like an NHLer already. And that's such <laughs> that a, shot is proof. Well, and just quick release. I mean, it wasn't on his stick hardly at all. He got it positioned, let it go. Langenanger never saw it. And the, uh, the Beavers get the first goal of the uh, semifinals here on Saturday night at the Sanford Center and a big, a big safe face-off win for Yuri Vicenin. Yes, you goal scoring summary brought to you by your friends at Insure Forward. Scoring his 11th goal of the season for your Beavers, number 23, Eric Polkamp. He was assisted by number 16, Yuri Vicenin. That's There's your Donlinger Chevrolet GMC scoring summary. Likers dump the puck in. Matias Scholl stops it behind the net. Beavers rocket it out to center ice. It's dumped back in by John Harrington. Beavers, when they score the game's first goal, 15-3-1. Lake State, when they don't score first, 9-17-1. Judding from the neutral zone, flips it in. Langenegger will stop it there behind the net. Beavers scored on their first shot. Lakers, Ross Rollison. Former goalie, Dwayne Rollison's kid. Polkamp spins it up the far side wall, picked up by Austin Jopi. Jopi fights it ahead, jutting into the offensive zone to Casper Magnuson in between the circles, carries it and lost it. Actually lost it down below the goal line. Just 
fought it there the whole way. Top of the left circle, Mitch Wolf sends it back left corner, back behind the net. Too far for Jopi, it's picked up by Lake State and tossed ahead to center ice. Timo back has got to the red line and fires it in deep. 16-30 left, first period, Beavers up one to nothing. Pole camp stick handling, lost the puck. Sends it to center, Lakers bring it right back in. Beavers toss it back to the neutral zone. Lake State tags up and goes back after it. Dump and chase, they win it in the right corner. Back up to the right point. Schweitzer goes to the left side point. Puck comes down low between the circles now. Beavers will carry it out to center ice. Into the offensive zone the late in the road. Road cuts towards the left, throws it into the middle. Bounces off his skate and goes to the end wall. Connor Milburn flips it to the line, not out. Kyle Loaf will hold it. Fired back out to center. Loaf will go track it down. Lake State off on a whole line change. Picked up by Will Magnuson. Magnuson will gain the red line and fire it in right corner to left. Beavers attacking to our left. Lake State flips it over the head of Kyle Loaf. Rolling puck won't get far enough for an icing call. Loaf will go get it, carries it back behind his own net. Now tosses it over here to the near side wall. It's picked up by Kirkland Irie. Irie will stick handle it out to center. Now toss it ahead. Eric Martin got a piece of it, so they wave off icing, and the Beavers will go off in a change. Gloved and dropped by Vison, and Vison goes right towards the net. Shot trickles wide of the left post. Vison and caught it, settled it, and oh. shot it in the blink of an eye. Fulmer holds blue line middle to the right side corner. Carter Jones fires it around to the near side point. Vince Corcoran is there. He'll send it right back behind the goal. Carter Jones with speed. Carries it top of the left circle. Fanned on it. Fights it down low. Flamang rips it up over the top of the crossbar. Hits the end glass. Lakers clear. Not out. Beavers a shot from the point. That was Flamang. Went wide. Lake State to the line. Corcoran holds momentarily. Now it's flipped ahead by Lake Superior State. Erie Weissman will go back to go get it. 14-28 left first period. 1-0 Bemidji State. A couple of great opportunities. And uh, just after the Erie Weissman rush to the net, a shot from the point that got redirected and Langenanger was able to make the save. Patrick Satisari, the extra skater tonight for the Beavers, plays it into the offensive zone. Now keeps it alive. Satisari sends it into the corner. Centering pass looking for Reese Chittenden to deny there by Lake Superior State. Comes to the left side corner. Dante Lawson keeps it alive down low for Bemidji State. Now it's pinned up along the wall as Chiddenton and also Jake McLean come around. Fired up the far side wall. Icing is waved off. Good pursuit there by Lake Superior State. McLean carries it across all three lines and lost the puck. Goes down below the goal line to go get it. Chopped straight up into the air, bounces around. Dante Lawson's got it. Dante down below the goal, feeds it out in front. Chiddington, Chiddington with a shot. Had absolutely nowhere to shoot it. There was a ton of traffic in front. Dante Lawson kicks back into the corner for the Beavers. Behind the net for the Lakers, Ross Rollison. Rollison stops, fires it around here to the near side. Beavers, Will Magnuson unable to hold. Carrying it out now through the neutral zone. Grant Heinemann, Heinemann comes in offside. 13.09 left, first period. Beavers up one to nothing. Good pace to this game so far. Seven minutes in, just a couple of whistles, one goal. Pole camp off a face-off a win from Yuri Bison, and that's how we got to one nothing. Up shooting the Lakers are the Beavers four to one. Two emails the booth, Ron and Mary watching in in Maui. So thanks for covering the Beavs all year. Ron and Mary, thanks for listening all year. And uh, Bob in Ohio says beat the Lakers, advance to the finals. I was a student at BSU during the heyday of the Lake State, Bemidji State National Championship runs. Mitch Wolf fires it around left corner to right. Austin Jopi bounces it down into the right side corner. Casper Magnuson roughed up there by Connor Milburn. Beavers keep the puck alive. Centering pass comes zipping from the far wall to the near wall. Right past Jackson Judding. Mitch Wolf steals. Wolf sends it over for Casper Magnuson. The shot from the left side circle. Right to the anchor on the chest of Ethan Langenegger. He'll hang on for a Beaver offensive zone faceoff. Well, the Lakers had a two on one. I don't know if they realized it, but that pass was not a good pass. It was a two on one. The lone defender 
Mitch Wolf just easily picks it off and takes it the other way, but that could have been a good opportunity for the Lakers to do something offensively as they have uh, spent most of the time in their defensive zone here the first seven and a half minutes. Clean faceoff win again for BSU. Mitch Wolf dumps it into the left side corner. Layton Road back up top for Polkamp. Polkamp fires it around. Kirkland Irie behind the net. Layton Road unable to corral it here on the near side. Lake State bounces one off the far side wall out to center ice. Mitch Wolf chops at it. Beavers possess it. Stolen right away though by Lake Superior State. Sasha Teleguin brings it into the offensive zone. He gets face planted into the wall there by Eric Polkamp. And the Beavers will break out to center ice. Bounced right to Eric Martin. Martin, top of the right circle. A shot may have gone off the blocker there of Ethan Langenegger. And it's deflected up and into the protective netting. Stoppage with the 11.45 left first period. 1-0 Bemidji State. Shots are 6-1 to one in favor of BSU. Well, maybe the semifinals, but this game, every game all season long, you can email the booth too. We've already heard from a couple. Love to hear from you. Go to beaverradionetwork.com, men's hockey section. Email the booth at the top of the page. Let us know where you're listening or watching tonight. Carter Jones off a clean faceoff win from Bison and Jones trying to go glove side. No traffic. Langenegger saw it the whole way and caught it. Going on for another faceoff. I like the shot, though. Not a bad idea. Uh, didn't have any traffic in front. That may get a little easier for Langenegger, but Beavers have uh, definitely had the best of this uh, game so far. Several opportunities and, of course, the one goal. Lakers win this draw. It's Harrison Roy. Kept alive by Carter Jones on the near wall. Down into the corner. Flamang puts it back for Jones. Jones carries it back into the left side circle. Cuts back now towards the corner. Jones still possessing the puck along the uh, near corner wall. Gets it back for Erie Vison and behind the net. Vison and stops, cuts back to the left. Now stops, cuts back to the right. Vison and pushes it right up to the point. Corker in a shot. Thumped off of somebody's boot out in front, I believe. That was uh, Jack Blanchett. Kick to the near corner, and Lake State will send it ahead to center. Roy ahead for Blanchett. Shot by the Lakers from the point. Deflected off of a BSU shin pad out to center. Lakers need to tag up. They'll just go off on a line change. Beavers will change as well. Corcoran off of Lawson's stick. Went right to Nate Schweitzer. The Lakers will push it ahead. Matias Scholl <laughs> sweeps it here to the near side, and it's fired into the third row. Sometimes the puck just sticks onto the blade of your stick a little too much. And that was the case there for sure, just trying to get out of the zone off the glass, but <laughs> that wasn't really even close. Up into the stands, face off to uh, Matias Schultz left here. Face off one by Bemidji State, banked off the near boards. Chiddenton tosses on a backhand too far for Jake McLean. Beavers need to tag up. They did get the puck, though, below the goal, Biss. We talked about puck battles in our pregame. If you can make your opponent go 200 feet, you just won a battle. Lakers promptly send it 200 feet up the near wall. Icing was waved off. Kyle Loaf now needs to break out. Pushes it behind the net now for Will Magnuson to Casper Magnuson. Casper just banks it off the glass. Icing waved off. It doesn't get all the way up the ice. Now there's Austin Jopi winning a battle, Biss. Yeah. Then it was stolen right back by Lake Superior State. That's how you can create those uh, opportunities, though. Icing waved off. 9.55 left first period. Beavers up one to nothing. Will Magnuson races to center. Right through the center logo. Throws it in on goal. And Ethan Langenegger, even without any real pressure, will just hang on to it for a media timeout. 9.45 left in the first. Beavers up one to nothing right here on the Beaver Radio Network.
Oh, hello, Italian nightclub from Jimmy John's. Ciao, freshly baked bread piled with Italian-style meats. Hey, hand-sliced veggies. Am I obsessed with this sandwich? Yeah. So what if I am? Jimmy John's. Order online or on the app. At Lake Superior State University, we know you are not a number. We know you have thought about your future. We know you want the best education. At LSSU, it is our mission to help you succeed. Our programs focus on you through hands-on, engaged learning. That is how we are redefining the classroom. Our Freaky Fast first score from Jimmy John's with Freaky Fresh, Freaky Fast Sandwich Delivery. The goal scored by Eric Polkamp. Freshman all-rookie team, all-first team CCHA player is 11th of the season. Well, they, uh, the Beavers are dominating in all stats right now. They've won nine of 10 face-offs, and they've uh, had eight to one shots on goal. If you win that many face-offs, you're gonna have more opportunities. Of course, that's how the goal was scored. Right circle face-off. Mary Weissenden. Credit for the face-off win and the assist on the pole camp goal. The puck was loose for so long, I don't know who they will credit that face-off win for. The Lakers finally carry it into the offensive zone, drops it off at the point, shot blocked by Flamang. Puck shot from the left point, this hit the right half boards. <laughs> well, Flamang kind of slid in front of the puck there. Puck comes in on Matias Scholl, he'll sweep it to the end wall. Mitch Wolf tries to push it up the far side wall, denied. Bison then gets it back, pushes it back behind the net now for Pole Camp. Pole Camp will carry it out to center ice. Nine to go here in the first. Beavers up one nothing, and Pole Camp is offside. As Eric Martin was in just a moment too soon. Fun to see that though. I mean, he picked up the puck at the uh, the goal line basically and skated it all the way through. Saw that there was a line change and. Space up the middle, took it all the way in. Eric Martin just a little bit in the zone on the right wing, anticipating Pole Camp getting across, but. Face off at center, one by Jackson Judding, flipped in by Austin Jopi. Lakers pick it up, far wall and toss high up into the air to center. Kyle Loft, Casper Magnuson who backhands it in deep. 8.42 left first period, Beavers up one nothing, Lake State. Tosses on a backhand up the ice. Picked up by Will Magnuson, deflected out towards center. Picked up there by Ross Rolison. In front of the penalty boxes here, Casper Magnuson steals. Casper Magnuson has a two on one. Feeds it across with a shot. Just missing the net was Austin Jopi. Jackson Judding gets to it. Juts tosses it off of the end wall. Picked up there by Jared Westcott of the Lakers. That turned into a two-on-one Biss in the blink of an eye. On oh, a great pass, and uh, Jopi, I mean, he was the shooter, no doubt about it. The defenseman was out of the play, but he chose to take a shot right away and got it up over the crossbar. Lakers back on the attack in the left side corner. Westcott tosses it to the right side corner. Picked up here on the near side wall by Leighton Road. Tossed to center ice. Eric Martin darts into the offensive zone. One on three. And Flipped his skate against the top of the stick or something, and he fell down. I think correctly deemed a no call. Lakers tap it into the offensive zone. Beavers toss off the wall in front of their own bench. Goes off of the shin pad of Vince Corcoran right towards the goal. That is why goalies need to be alert at all times. Martin into the offensive zone. Penalty is going to be called here. I don't know on whom. It must be against the Beavers. Against the Beavers, yes. Up. I think they took out Langenegger, the goalie. Interference is the call. Kirkland Irie making his way to the Green Mill penalty box. The Green Mill pizza, pasta, beer, and wings. Well, that kills some momentum. Bemidji State's really dominated the first uh, Almost 13 minutes of the game, but Lake Superior State, who's attempted just three shots in the first 13 minutes, gets an opportunity here to tie it up. Well, Langenanger did a pretty good job of acting a little bit there. Irie definitely touched him. But he, he gave him a bump. 
Shot from the point by Rollison to the glove of Matthias Scholl. Power play for the Lakers, 24 of 106, 22.6%. Beaver penalty kill, 80 of 107, 74.8%. It has been getting better as of late. Lakers, Harrington, right side wall, carries to the hash marks, pushes the puck back up to Rollison, cross ice pass. Austin Jopi will engage there with the uh, Laker, I believe that was Harrison Roy, maybe Milburn, eight or nine. It was Roy. Lakers keep it alive, right side corner up to the point. Pass to Rollison, deflected out to center by Judding. Judding waves everyone off. He'll stay on, now Judding will go off, change up on the penalty killers. Lakers back in on zone entry. That's John Harrington, lost the puck. Pole camp fires around to the far side. Short hand and the Beavers have a two on one. Erie Weissenden, the trailer is rode. Weissenden shoots, it goes off of the blocker or off of the glove, excuse me, of Ethan Langenegger. And Lake Superior State gets a line change of the power play. That's like the third three, two on one for the Beavers already in this game. They haven't been able to convert any of them, but can't keep giving those up if you're the Lakers. 44 seconds left in the penalty. Leighton Road had a stick swatted out of his hands. It's like, hey, why isn't that a penalty? Road gets one. No, he doesn't get one from the bench. Cross ice pass deflected. Now well. Road could use a stick. Still doesn't have one. Lakers up to the point. Throw it out to center. Ooh. Road will go get a stick and he'll just climb over the boards. Lakers on zone entry. Shot taken there by Jared Westcott. That one was blocked into the corner. Beavers Ooh. launch it into the bench. Heads up. <laughs> Eight seconds left in the Otter Tail Power. Power play, 521 left in the first. Beavers lead one to nothing. Not a bad idea. Polkamp just ripped that thing. But there's no glass in front of the bench. That thing went into the uh, Beaver bench. Stoppage in play, but not a bad idea as you're just trying to kill off the final uh, part of this penalty to Kirkland Irate. Just eight seconds left. Another faceoff win for Bemidji State. It was Jackson jutting on the faceoff win. Penalty is done, Irie out of the box. Lakers dump the puck in deep, 5.08 left here first period. Polkamp, the lone goal of the night so far. Beavers out shooting Lake State, nine to three. Beavers pick it up and launch it up the far wall. That's an icing call. Lakers were able to get two shots on that uh, power play, the best of which was from just outside the faceoff dot. Show made the save, the Lakers in front crashing the net, but it skittered out into the uh, corner. I believe the Misfits have finally joined us, Biss, from Michigan Tech. Oh, yeah. I, I thought they'd be listening now that their team has advanced to the championship on Friday. Austin Jopi dumps the puck in. 4.43 left here, first period. Harrington deflects it at center. Beavers go track it down behind their own net. Launched up the near wall. Harrington got a piece of that, so no icing on the Beavers. Lake State quickly transitions out to center. Roy pushed it ahead for Timo Backus and the Lakers are offside. John in uh, Georgia, love the energy that the uh, boys came out with. He also watched the last period of Tech and Mankato. That was a goofy finish. <laughs> Says I don't want to go through that tonight. Neutral zone faceoff, won by Lake Superior State. The Lakers last Sunday against uh, against uh, St. Thomas, another odd man rush. Here comes Leighton Road darting into the offensive zone to the left side, just throws it towards the net. And it's covered up by Ethan Langenegger. Lakers took a five minute major on a uh, boarding call. Scored shorthanded and then ended up winning the game with 6.6 .6 seconds yeah. left. That's 
a team that's coming in with a lot of confidence. Yeah, and, uh, you know, they just have to weather the storm here in the first period. I mean, Bemidji State, I mean, you know, as the home team, you know, usually does sometimes, they come out strong. But uh, if you can maintain, you know, a one-goal difference, a two goals, just stay in the game. The longer the game goes, the more you're in it, and anything can happen. Eric Martin stops. Everyone goes skating right past him. Gives him some time and space. Throws it into the offensive zone. Tossed right back out. Leighton Road throws it in from a stride or so before the blue line. Gloved and dropped by Langenegger. Dante Lawson steals now on the right side wall. Lawson carries it behind the net. Tries to cut back. Lost an edge. Lakers pick it up. Arna Borshov sends it to the corner. Beavers still keep it alive. Jopi, a shot deflected, and it's pinned up along the side of the net. By Lake State goalkeeper Ethan Langenegger. Barb emails the Paul Bunny Net mailbag, watching it in Tucson. Keep up the good work. And Cato fans must be really bummed to lose in the last nine and a half seconds. Because we know how that feels from the past. Well, I mentioned in the pregame the last time these two teams met in the playoffs is the semifinals in 2021. And the Beavers came in ranked 13th in the country and they lost 4 1. That bounced from the. Uh, Mason Cup playoffs. Shot right off of the draw by the Beavers. Sails wide. 3-11 left. First period, Beavers up 1-0. Flipped ahead by Brandon PQ. Mitch Wolf will pick it up at his defensive blue line. And faked a pass deeper into the defensive zone and threw it into his own bench. <laughs> George cheering on the Beavs uh, from Indiana. David Bohm, former Beaver, says uh, Beaver's all-time toughest hairlines. Number one, Aaron McLeod. Number two, Charlie O'Connor. Number three, Austin Jopi. <laughs> Bomer, you're forgetting about Schultz and Biss. Yeah. Oh, well, mine just turned gray, so I just started cutting it. 258 left. Face-off win there for the Lakers. John Harrington carries it into the left side corner. Flipped around here to the near side. Carter Jones has it for the Beavers in the defensive end. Jones carries it deeper into the right side corner. Puck rockets out to the far side. Picked up there by Polkamp. He's got some time and space. Cross ice, Polkamp hits Carter Jones. Jones carries into the offensive zone, left side wall. Pinned up along the wall there by Nate Schweitzer. Jones comes walking out of the corner now with it. Lakers steal it right back and toss to center. Tony Fulmer tries to chip it ahead, cannot, and the Lakers flip it the rest of the way up the ice. 2.17 to go here, first period. Fulmer to the neutral zone to Jones. Deflected into Reagan Milburn. The Lakers toss it ahead. Deflected into the neutral zone. Matias stops it and sends it over to the far wall. Lakers a shot from the left side wall, turned away by Matias Scholl. Rebound picked up by Fulmer, ahead for Casper Magnuson. Drops it back for Austin Jopi. Pass back to the blue line, deflected by Lake State. Kyle Loaf just coming onto the ice, dumps the puck in. The Beavers have to tag up and do. Lake State tosses it back into the neutral zone. Minute 37 to go here, first period. Beavers up, one to nothing. Casper Magnuson sends it into the offensive zone. Lake State picks it up. Push right back out to center by Borshoff. Picked up by Loft. Deflected at center. Casper Magnuson gets it back for Kyle Loft. Casper will walk off the uh, ice at the bench. Kirkland Irie carries it down low for the Beavers. He gets pinned up along the end wall. Lake State bounces one off of the near wall. Out to center, Mitch Wolf. Deflected in now by Jopi. Beavers will change with a minute two left here in this first period. Shots are at 11 to three. Lake State from center, dumps the puck in. That's Sasha Telegwin. Into the right side corner. Telegwin centers a pass, nobody home. Leighton Road picks it up between the circles for the Beavers who transition out to center quickly. Eric Martin tried to cut through three Lakers and lost the puck. Lake State tosses to center. Picked up there on the far side wall. Chopped around now at center and backhanded in by Evan Bushy. The Thief River Falls native. 26 seconds left. Eric Martin 
Skates it through the neutral zone. Tosses to Leighton Road on the near side wall. Road tracks it down left side corner. It's bumped off of the play. Picked up by Timo Bacchus. Lakers have it to Roy. Now, now for Rollison. Rollison zone entry with eight seconds left. Follows the puck around to the right side corner. A centering pass. Gloved and covered by Matias Scholl. Matias tried to shove it into the end wall and it was blown dead with 3.2 seconds left. Yeah, I would have liked to just put that behind the net and let the uh, time run off the clock. Instead, it'll be an offensive zone faceoff for the Lakers. They've struggled a little bit offensively, but uh, they've given up so many odd man rushes on the, the last play they had a chance. The puck came popping off the end boards. With 3.2 left, they're gonna pull Ethan Langenegger for an extra attacker in the offensive end. Right circle faceoff tied up there. Horn will sound on that. We'll do it. A good period for Bemidji State, but if you're Lake Superior State, you have to feel pretty good that uh, it's just one nothing. It's still anybody's game that didn't get away from them here in the uh, first period. So they can get back into the uh, locker room and regroup a little bit. Wayne and Norma email the Paul Bunny Net mailbag. Listening in from uh, San Antonio, wishing the boys the best as get the win. We'll be in the stands at the Sanford Center next weekend. And uh, John Carlson emails in from Mazatlan. Thanks for being there for us. Nice. I guarantee it was warmer in Mazatlan today than it was in Bemidji. <laughs> the wind was nasty this Yeah, really today. windy today. Beavers won, Lakers nothing here, end of one, as Reese Chittenton is set to uh, join us now outside of the uh, Beaver locker room. Uh, Reese, you guys are so darn good when you score first. What is different about this team that you guys just seem to play a lot more comfortable and a lot more loose when you do uh, have a lead. Yeah, no, it's always good to score the first one and get ahead, but uh, as far as we're concerned, going into the second period, it's still 0-0, so just got to keep on them. Well, it's an exciting week leading up, you know, obviously the playoffs, this is what you play for. Talk about uh, the lead up to today. How was this week for you? Uh, this week we were just preparing for, uh, for puck drop tonight, and it all, all came down to Saturday, so that's all we were looking forward for. Do you personally have a hard time bringing yourself back down to earth and not getting too ramped up, or do you just let the emotions go? Uh, I'm pretty good at conducting myself uh, with my emotions, but uh, it's definitely uh, definitely my nerves are up, and <laughs> I'm ready to go. Well, the last uh, few weeks have been great for you and your line mates. What's, uh, what's been the key to that? Uh, we're just playing our game, honestly. We're just working hard every single shift and playing beaver hockey, and that's basically our key to success out there. Best of luck. Thank you. Reese Chittenden joining us here on our... Pepsi and I bottling first intermission. Beavers lead 1-0 after the first 20 minutes. Eric Polkamp, his 11th of the season. Beavers won, Lakers nothing. Our Pepsi and I bottling first intermission on the way for you next right here on the Beaver Radio Network. Oh, hello, Italian nightclub from Jimmy John's. Chow freshly baked bread piled high with Italian-style meats and provolone. ADU2 hand sliced veggies. Oil and vinegar, oregano and basil. Nice to see ya. Am I obsessed with this sandwich? Yes. Should I see someone about that? Probably. Jimmy John's, order online or on the app. What's the best environment to study the environment? At Bemidji State University, it's not in the classroom or in a lab but in the actual environment, in the fields and in the forests, and on more than 400 lakes within 25 miles of our campus. What can the Northwoods teach you? Find out at Bemidji State University. Purple, it's not just a color. It represents our state, our home, and our team. At Affinity Plus, we have the experience to help you achieve your financial goals while helping our neighbors in need. It's our purple pride, because banking is what we do, and people is who we are. Affinity Plus, your purple banking people. Named number one credit union in Minnesota by Forbes magazine. At Lake Superior State University, we know you are not a number. We know you have thought about your future, we know you want the best education. At LSSU, it is our mission to help you succeed. Our programs focus on you. 
through hands-on, engaged learning. That is how we are redefining the classroom. Welcome back here to the Sanford Center and CCHA Mason Cup semifinals. Schultz and Biss with you tonight here uh, on the Beaver Radio Network and uh, here on uh, Flow. Eric Polkamp to goal. Beavers lead 1 0. Biss with our hot spring hot tubs of Northern Minnesota stats through the first. Well, the Beavers outshoot the Lakers 11 3. Just one penalty. It went against Bemidji State. The Lakers unsuccessful. They're 0 for 1 on the power play. BSU has doubled up the Lakers on faceoffs 14 7. And block shots, the Lakers have six to Bemidji's four. One nothing Beavers, end of one. We recap the CCHA honors when we come back. It's our Pepsi and I bottling first intermission on the Beaver Radio Network. Shot by Pole Camp. Tucked it underneath the bar and in. Beavers lead one nothing. Clean face off win. Pole Camp takes two strides towards the middle of the rink and roofed it. Well, that's what a clean face-off win can do. It didn't take long. Drop of the puck, back of the net. Beavers up by one. You know the right move for you. Learn a trade and earn a good living. Northwest Technical College can be the best right move you'll ever make. Get the education and training you need for high-demand, well-paying jobs, working in an office, running your own business, caring for children, and more. Join nearly 1,000 students at Northwest Technical College who are taking the classes they need to move up, not move over. Northwest Technical College. Learn today, earn tomorrow. Hockey is adventure. Hockey is fun. Hockey is belonging. Hockey is life. Hockey is friendship. Hockey is determination. Hockey is teamwork. Hockey is passion. Hockey is family. Hockey is the best. Join. 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 Join the family. For more information, go to BemidjiYouthHockey.org. For this week in the CCHA, I'm Brian Schultz. Central Collegiate Hockey Association announced that Minnesota State University graduate student Sam Morton has been voted the CCHA Player of the Year, CCHA Forward of the Year, and all CCHA first team selection, one of three finalists for the honor, along with Bemidji State's Kyle Loft and Matias Scholl. Morton, out of Lafayette, Colorado, faced all CCHA skaters in goals with 15 goals per game, .63. Power play goals, eight, shots, 102, faceoff wins, 292, and faceoff wins per game at 12.2. Adding six assists, he was fourth in points and faceoff percentage. CCHA forward of the month in January after totaling six goals and three assists for nine points. He had four multi-point games. Through 36 games, Morton has 24 goals, 10 assists, 34 points. His nine power play tallies rank eighth nationally. Morton was also named the CCHA forward of the year. The CCHA announcing that Bemidji State fifth-year senior Kyle Loft has been voted the Defenseman of the Year, previously named the conference's best defensive defenseman, and named the CCHA first team. He's also a finalist for the Player of the Year. The Beavers' two-time captain, Loft out of Mankato, led all CCHA skaters in plus-minus in league action at plus-16. Pace Conference Blue Liners and assists with 14 and points with 18. 
Despite playing in just 20 games, he scored four goals, including one on the power play, fifth among all skaters, and first among defensemen in multi-point games with five. Lopez recorded career highs in goals with six, assists with 22, and points with 28 through 30 total games this season. CCHA also announcing that Bemidji State Junior Matias Scholl has been voted the goaltender of the year, also named the CCHA first team. Scholl out of Hermosa Beach, California, led conference dent minders in goals against average 2.03 and winning percentage at 786. He went 10-2-2 two two with a 9.24 save percentage in 14 games for the Beavers. And one shutout in conference play, Scholl allowed two goals or fewer in 11 of his 14 starts. CCHA announcing that its Rookie of the Year is Michigan Tech freshman Isaac Gordon. He also was named to the All-Rookie Team as well as the All-CCHA Second Team. Gordon second among All-CCHA skaters in goals with 11 during conference play, pacing league rookies in points with 20. In plus minus, he was plus 10. Overall, Gordon has played in all 37 games for the Huskies this season, 18 goals and 18 assists. CCHA also announcing that Jackson Judding of the Beavers and Connor Milburn of Lake Superior State have been named CCHA co-best defensive forwards. Named the all-first team this year, Bemidji State had four. At forward, Sam Morton from Minnesota State, Leighton Road from BSU, and Jared Westcott of Lake State named first team, while Kyle Loft, Eric Polkamp, and Matias Scholl were all first team from Bemidji State at defense and goalie. The all-second team had six student-athletes from five different programs. Isaac Gordon from Michigan Tech, Connor Milburn from Lake State, and Lucas Wallen from St. Thomas made up the forwards. Evan Murr from Minnesota State and Josh Zinger from Northern were the defensemen, and Blake Gettle from Michigan Tech earned the goalie honor. Named the all-rookie team, Luigi Benincasa from Ferris State, Isaac Gordon from Michigan Tech, and John Harrington from Lake State. They were all rookie forwards. Evan Murr from Minnesota State and Eric Polkamp from BSU made up the team's blue line while Cole Moore from Bowling Green was selected as the all-rookie goalie. That's this week in the CCHA. I'm Brian Schultz for the Beaver Radio Network. That does it for our Pepsi and I bottling first intermission. Pepsi, that's what I like. Start of the second, brought to us by the Keg and Cork, home of the half-off, absent taps, happy hour. 
Bemidji State when leading after the first, 9-2 and 1. Lake State when trailing after the first, 5-10 and 1. Bunch more emails of Booth, courtesy of Paul Bunning Communications. Matt Carlson, former Beaver, says this team is special, watching it in Fertile. Christine and Natalie watching it in Rosemount, cheering on the Beavs, wishing they could be here in person. Stanton says, I'm just happy the best band in college hockey has another week to play. <laughs> that would be a Michigan Tech fan. Uh, Misty watching the Beavs in Bowling Green. Uh, says cheering for either team as long as they beat the Huskies in the final. <laughs> Huge pole camp fan though since his two older brothers played for Bowling Green. Charlie in Granite Falls emails the Paul Bunny Net mailbag. Evening guys, we've cleared our schedules for next weekend's game. Just waiting for tickets to go on sale. Go Beavs. Well, one goal game here to start the uh, second period. Real solid 20 minutes for Bemidji State. Lakers back on their heels. What, three, four, two on one. Odd man rushes they gave up. And that leads to a little bit more conservatism. They had a couple of chances where the puck came loose in Beaver territory, but they were backing up when they, uh, if they were a little bit, uh, I think they hadn't given up those odd man rushes. Might be a little bit more aggressive in the, um, on the four check but they might have been a little aggressive on the four check and gave up those two on one. So kind of a balancing act, trying to get something going. They had the power play. They got two of their three shots on that power play. Otherwise, pretty non-existent, off, non-existent offensively there in the first period. But again, one nothing. So you watched the uh, game winner during the intermission. Yeah, I did. On CCHA's Twitter page or? Uh, oh, yeah, C- CCHA's website. Bonkers. Yeah, that's only thing, way to describe that one. Yeah, you got to feel for. I mean, it went off the defender and net tried to jump and get catch the puck. It went off his glove, off the goalie's head, and into the net. Just how you draw it up. Yeah, and of course, Tech fans. They, you know, I would think they're hoping that they, uh, the Lakers, will come back and win because then they'd host next weekend. Beavers win the second period opening faceoff. Kyle Loaf flips the puck into the right side corner. Beavers attacking here to our right. Thrown up towards the point. Loaf cannot hold. He'll go track it down in his own end. And he rockets one through the neutral zone. That hit somebody. Not a Laker, and it's going to be icing. The Lakers will get to choose which faceoff circle they would like. You too get to choose your therapist. Choose Choice Therapy in Bemidji. Well, you hear all these email debuts. You can chime in as well. Been uh, very active on the mailbag, as you would expect here on semifinal Saturday. BeaverRadioNetwork.com, men's hockey game, men's hockey section. Email the booth at the top of the page. Fill out the form and chime in on uh, tonight's broadcast. Beavers able to clear it to center. Lake State brings it right back in. Carrington, left side wall, drops it back there for uh, Roy. Beavers toss it high up into the air. Rolling puck should get and does get far enough for an icing call. 19-13 left here in this second period. Yeah, if I'm uh, the Lakers or the fans, you know, a little frustrated maybe that there hasn't been much offense, but it could be worse. Uh, Bemidji State's had some primetime scoring opportunities. Langenegger has been up to the task. Stopped 10 of 11 so far. Lakers win the left circle faceoff. Back for Evan Bushy, throws it back up to the point. And all the way to center. Dumped back in there by Nate Schweitzer. Stopped behind the net by Matias Scholl. Leaves it for Kyle Loaf, who sends it up the far side wall. Casper Magnuson pokes at it, but cannot clear it. Lakers try a centering pass. It was deflected by Will Magnuson. Right to Kyle Loaf, who just flips it up into the air. Caught and carried in now by Austin Jopi. Jopi sends it across. Too far for Jackson Judding. Picked up by Lake State. Schweitzer. Through the neutral zone, chopped in there by, I think that was Bushy. Lakers all have a tendency of having the back of their jersey and the backs of their, their breezers. <laughs> These jerseys are a lot easier to read than their home, home white ones are. Yellow numbers. <laughs> Yikes. Well, cross ice pass there. The Lakers just not getting a lot of puck luck. That was an open pass. It was just off the ice a little bit, but deflects up and into the crowd. They've had uh, more offensive puck possession time here. If I'm them, I'm, I'm 
you know, you get a shot, take the shot. Let's start getting some shots on goal here and see what we can do. Face off one by Batchelder. Beavers pick it up, launch up the far wall. That's another icing call on Bemidji State here. 18 17 left second period. Of course, with the uh, sides changing, this is always the period where those odd man rushes can be a result of a bad line change. Always got to be aware of where you are, where the puck is before you're headed off the ice. Left circle face off. This one's won by Leighton Road. Road then tries to dump it around behind the net. It was deflected up and out of play. Deflected off of a Lake State stick so the Beavers can get a line change here. After icing it, they couldn't. And if you throw it out of your own end into the crowd, you also cannot change, but since that was deflected, they can. And they will. Gary Lyson steps into the faceoff circle. Both centers false start. Five yard offensive for uh, offsetting penalties. <laughs> Beavers pick it up and toss it ahead. The Lakers are offside, puck gets down below the goal line. That was a pretty good job by the linesman who dropped the puck and had to get back to try to, to try to see that. He wasn't right on the blue line, but that clearly came outside the blue line. Offsides the call, face off outside the uh, Beaver zone as we've had a kind of a drop the puck, stop, drop the puck, stop, start to this second period, two minutes in. So the face off happens inside the zone. The other linesman is on the blue line. Well, he had already started to vacate. Since that faceoff happened in the neutral zone. Linesman here on the near side had to cover both blue lines. Lake State picks up the puck and will carry it through the neutral zone. Pass deflected there by Mitch Wolf. Offsides. Yes, it was. Good job, good stick by Mitch Wolf. That's what caused the offsides. They were coming in three on two, but how many face-offs have we had this period? Cook checked away. Uh, like see. seven or eight already? <laughs> Seems like it. Played two minutes. Seven. This is the eighth one. <laughs> yeah. And that's, I mean, again, that's probably good for the Lakers. Slow down the game a little bit. Well, they want to play with pace, but Weavers deflected into the offensive zone. That's eight face-offs in two minutes and 17 seconds. Roy chips it out to center. Flamang from the red line dumps it back in. Beavers lead 1-0, 17-20 left second period. Lakers in the neutral zone, Timo Bacchus lost it. It's flipped out towards center, jumps the stick of Flamang. Lessing waved off as Langenegger went out of the crease to go play it. And a penalty is gonna be called on Erie Weissenden, I believe. A slash maybe? Flamang. Oh, Flamang. He was forechecking behind the net. It's an offensive zone penalty, a little over aggressive. Took a, I think he knocked the stick out of the uh, Laker defenseman's hands. Well, Leighton Road had the stick knocked out of his hands as well. Well, that one wasn't called, and that was on the penalty kill back in the first. Here, just joining us, the Beavers got on the scoreboard 148 into the hockey game. A clean faceoff win by Vison and back to pole camp, roofed it. And that's the only goal so far. Second power play of the game for the Lakers. Beavers shorthanded, pick it up. Jackson jutting, top of the left circle. Shot off of the pads of Ethan Langenair and jutting went right towards the goal. And jutting got taken down in the corner. We play on. Runner Batchelder bounces the puck past Kyle Loaf. Batchelder goes and gets it, tries to feed it back up top. And that one goes past the stick of Schweitzer back to the neutral zone. Bushy into the offensive zone, drops it back for Batchelder over the right side wall. Good job by Kirkland Irie of stealing the puck and clearing it all the way up the ice. Lakers had two shots on goal on their uh, first power play in the first period. That was two of three shots in the period to total. They have yet to get the puck towards the net here in the first minute of this power play. Tritt who scored the game winner last Sunday night. Got Stood up and dropped down to the ice on a big open ice hit. Lakers, though, keep it in the offensive zone. Right side wall with it is Harrington. Tries to feed it down below the goal. It's picked up by the Beavers. Eric Martin. Martin shorthanded, one on four. Stops, waits, 
has it taken off of his stick as the Beavers change up the other three penalty killers. Now Kyle Loaf steals the puck. Loaf tries to feed it ahead for Martin. It goes off of his skates as Martin was trying to get his hands situated back onto his stick. Well, I understand what Eric was thinking, but you can't stop right there on a line change. He, they got away with it, but that could have been an odd man rush the other way. Tony Fulmer throws his man down. Beavers cleared off the glass and all the way up the ice. Just 12 seconds left in the Undertale power power play for the Lakers. And a penalty is going to be called as Leighton Rhodes got his stick knocked out of his hands by Jack Blanchett, and Blanchett will head to the penalty box. Yeah, uh, you don't need to be doing that. Pretty obvious. Negates the power play, what's left of it. Five seconds. Slashing going to be the penalty, and the Beavers will get their first power play of the night. Oh. If I'm to play de- <laughs> if I'm to play devil's advocate, I would say that Leighton Road needs to hold on to the stick, stick a little, a little bit, bit better. Tighter, but yeah, but we've seen a couple. I mean, the, the one yeah. that wasn't called against him that probably should have been in the first period, and then the penalty obviously for Judding doing the same thing. I mean, Flamang. He clearly lifted his stick, but he also didn't have the puck. And the puck wasn't coming to him. Right there, there was. I mean. Gen- generally speaking, in a hockey game, a player's stick doesn't go eight feet in the air. Correct. <laughs> that one did. So four on four for five seconds, and the Beavers will get an otter tail power power play. Clean face-off win. Pole camp back to Loaf. Back for pole camp. A drive right off of the left leg pad of Ethan Langenegger. Flamang out of the box. Beavers on the attack on the power play. Flamang tosses it over for... Jackson Judding, who puts it onto the stick of Pole Camp, who carries it in. Pole Camp drops it back now for Leighton Road. Road sets up shop on the far side half wall. Road spins away from pressure, goes down below the goal for Eric Martin. Judding and Road both out in front of the net. Pole Camp gets the puck here on the near side wall, carries it to the half wall, shot down low to the ice. That is just opposite of where he scored two goals last week. All right, I was looking for him to start r- rushing the net, go down deep. It was loaf to pole camp twice last weekend. Well, pole camp was on the left wall last week. I do have it on good intel that in practice they did move pole camp to the right side this week. Well, that's where he was. Kind of skated it down low, but not a lot of room to shoot there. Lakers win the draw. 14.35 left here, second period. The Lakers throw it into the crowd. It was deflected. So the faceoff will come to center. Beavers on the power play at for a minute 23. 14-34 here left in the second. Boy, this is taking forever. The it's first five were, minutes. It's because there were eight faceoffs in the first two minutes and 15 seconds. The Lakers win this draw and drive it promptly up the ice. Matias Scholl will stop it there. Beavers lose it at center. It's carried in by Connor Milburn, shorthanded. Thrown ahead for Borshoff. He sends it back behind the net, and the Beavers will pick it up there. Power play at for a minute. Kyle Loft. Defenseman of the year and defensive defenseman of the year in the league. Pole camp, zone entry over to the far side wall. Jackson Judding loses control of it. Lakers spin it around and out all the way up the ice. It'll go. Lakers change up the penalty killers. Scholl leaves it there for pole camp. Still time for one more rush. 37 seconds left in the Otter Tail Power. Power play. Flamang goes cross ice. Driven in by Casper Magnuson around to the near side half wall. Weissman gets knocked down right after he released the puck down into the corner right side. Pinned up along the end wall. Picked up by Flamang. Tossed ahead for Carter Jones. Jones, blue line middle for Mitch Wolf to the right side circle. It goes for Casper Magnuson. A shot wide to the left side. Beavers still on the attack. Eight seconds to go in the power play. Flamang tosses it ahead for Vison and Vison and down below the goal. Columbus walking out in front. Backhanded shot. Save is made. Rebound on the forehand. Goes right to the chest of Langenegger and out of the box. Comes Lewandowski. Flamang, right corner, centers a pass. That one hits traffic. Flamang will go get it himself now in the left side corner. 
Leaves it down into the corner for Vicenin. 12.53 left here in the second period. Beavers up 1-0. Shots on goal, 15-3. Beavers carry it up to the point. Vicenin goes cross ice. Will Magnuson chops it behind the net. There's Dante Lawson for Bemidji State. Back up top for Wolf. Wolf tries to throw it down to the far side for Reese Chittenden. Back door. It's tapped in by Jake McLean, and the Beavers go up 2-0. Throw it towards the net. That fourth line, man, they have caught fire. And that's a big goal. Jake McLean able to get it past Langenegger. Just keep going towards the net. It hit a Laker defender, bounced to Lawson. Went over to McLean and he's able to hack it home somehow. Dante Lawson does so many good things out in front of the net. Seems like every shift they've had the last six weeks, they've had the puck in their opponent's zone almost the entire time. Time for your Donlinger Chevrolet GMC goal scoring summary. An insure forward scoring his sixth goal in season four. Your Beavers number 27, Jake McLean. He was assisted by number 13, Dante Lawson, and number six, Mitch Wolf. There's your scoring summary for the Beavers' second goal. They're up 2 0. Not quite midway through this game. Beavers about to steal it. The offensive blue line that was Chiddington. Lakers though rocket one ahead. Dawson Tritt. Tritt on zone entry lost it. Corcoran to the near side. Fulmer rockets one ahead for Eric Martin. Tosses a pass down low. Oh! And Irish hits and scores! Irie just chips it up over the shoulder of Ethan Langenegger and the Beavers are up by three. 200 feet in about five seconds. That pass was all the way up the ice and what a great touch pass by Martin and backhand to forehand and flip for Irie. And the Beavers go up by three. Looks like less than a minute, maybe a minute, two seconds after the second goal. Irie's eighth of the season, just a nifty play all around. Gets control of it, gets switches into forehand just in time. How do you not shoot that over the crossbar? He's trying to go up high, I get that, but I don't know how he did it from in that tight. Your friends at Insure Ford, scoring for the Beavers, his eighth of the season, number 20, Kirkland Irie. He was assisted by number 11, Eric Martin, and number two, Tony Fulmer. There's your Donlinger Chevrolet GMC scoring summary. Lakers back out through the neutral zone. Pass too far for Brandon PQ. 10.55 left, second period. Beavers are up by three, Biss. They've given up three shots. Yeah, they've really controlled play well. I mean, it's been a little bit more jammed up here in the second, but they've gotten two through. Mitch Wolf a shot blocked by Brandon PQ and he is not getting up. Beavers dump it in. PQ's got to try to limp off to the uh, bench as it's flipped in by Teleguin. Wolf behind the net. Sends it ahead, Austin Jopi. Jopi along the right side wall, one on one. Just throws it towards the net. Fought with the blocker over to the far wall. By Ethan Langenegger, Beavers get it back, left circle, pass across to the right, was deflected as they were looking for Jackson Judding. Lakers send the puck in. Midway point of this hockey game, Beavers by three, Beavers turn it over, a shot to the bread basket of Matias Scholl. His first shot comes 10 minutes in and it's from point blank range. Timeout on the ice, the Beavers have tacked on two, they lead three nothing. Mason Cup semifinals here on the Beaver Radio Network. Oh, hello, Italian nightclub from Jimmy John's. Chow freshly baked bread piled high with Italian style meats and provolone. ADU2 hand sliced veggies. Oil and vinegar. Oregano and basil, nice to see ya. Am I obsessed with this sandwich? Yes. 
Should I see someone about that? Probably. Jimmy John's. Order online or on the app. You've heard the news. The demand for healthcare professionals has never been stronger. But did you know that healthcare means more than nursing and the pay has never been better? In two years or less, an affordable, accessible education from Northwest Technical College can give you the training you need for a well paying, in demand job in nursing, dental assisting, healthcare administration, community health work, gerontology, and more. Start the path toward your dream job in healthcare. Northwest Technical College. Learn today, earn tomorrow. Welcome to the Acme Tools Ice Crew. Acme Tools. Beavers lead 3 0 and 9.59 left, second period. Beavers out shooting the Lakers 20 4. Justin emails the Paul Money Net mailbag in Sault Ste. Marie at Taffy Able Arena, watching the game on the Jumbotron. The uh, Lakers. Oh, that's cool that they do that. Uh, basketball team is also in action today, so they had a watch party all day long. Cool. At Taffy Able Arena. Fun. Uh, Tyler listening in in the Middle East while deployed. His son Emmett is watching from home in Fargo with his mom. He's hoping the Beavers win tonight so they can go to the Mason Cup Finals next weekend in Bemidji. Oh, that's cool. Tyler says, miss you, buddy, and next season when I'm home, we'll go to lots of games. Well, then that put life into perspective. Yeah, that's super in a cool. Hurry. Thanks for your service. Beaver steal Flamang into the offensive zone. Zips one just one of the top left corner. Settled down by Evan Bushy. He cannot clear it. This, we talked in the uh, pregame about winning puck battles. <laughs> Bemidji State has won a ton of them tonight. Lakers into the offensive zone. John Harrington bumped off of the puck. It deflects up and out of play. Now, how, how many hours do you think that is? Is it the middle of the night in uh, the Middle East, you think? Yes, we, we do not go into politics, <laughs> religion, <laughs> or time math, zones. or geography. I'm just thinking we gotta be up pretty late or up very early. If you're the Lakers here, I mean, you're just trying to get one back here. Let's get one back, make it a two goal game, get some momentum going our way, but you gotta start putting pucks towards the net. They have to have the puck to do that. Bemidji State has possessed it a whole lot more tonight. Kyle Loaf crosses the red line, flips it into the crowd. Which is good, you know, of course, uh, if you're a Beaver fan and you were with us last Friday night, that first 10 minutes of the game had everybody pretty worried. It was, uh, it was not very good. Ferris State controlled play, had two goals. Fortunately, Bemidji State was able to come back from two goals down twice in that game. And Polkamp, of course, won it in overtime, but I think uh, that start was important for Bemidji State this Friday night versus last Friday night, and what a difference it made. They they played solid in that first 20 minutes. Patrick Sadasari, rink wide to Fulmer. Fulmer drives it in. Tony Fulmer had the first pass on that second shot. On that the, went, what, 170 feet? <laughs> Well, it was just a great breakout play. I mean, if you slow that down, he knows that uh, he's got Martin uh, streaking down the side. So Fulmer to Martin, who got it in between the center ice and the uh, Laker blue line, and then a nice little touch pass to Kirkland Irie, who did the rest. And that was 58 seconds after Jake McLean knocked in uh, that uh, second goal of the game. So quickly became a three-goal game. I bet you if you slowed it down, it was on Eric Martin's stick for three quarters of a second maybe well, and it's just such a tough touch pass too because you know Irie's in motion you got to put it right on the tape if you want it to succeed and then on Irie's stick for three quarters of a second maybe because he had it on the backhand got to the forehand Beavers three on two shot stick to side Leighton Road picks it up on the end wall back up top Vince Corker in a drive that one's blocked out in front by Connor Milburn Lakers to the line and out to center the Lakers have a three on two Far side wall, Teleguin stops, feeds it back up towards the point. Puck trickles in as Cam Kungo went driving towards the goal. Corcoran picks up the puck, banks it off of the far wall, or near side wall. It's picked up again by Milburn and dumped in. 7.51 to go, second period. Beavers lead 3 nothing. 
Casper Magnuson lost it at center. <laughs> Caught. Hand passed. Went off one Laker yeah. glove right to the <laughs> another Lakers glove. We'll stop play. Faceoff will come down in the Lakers zone. 7.45 left to go. Second period again. One in the first right away. 148 of the first period. Pull camp from Vicenin. Then it was uh, Jake McLean at 7.32 of the second from Lawson and Wolf. And then 58 seconds later, Kirkland Irie from Martin and Fulmer. Those are all different names. Lakers win the defensive zone faceoff. Race towards center. Brandon PQ dumps it in from the red line. Regardless of who wins this game. Centering pass out in front. Mm -hmm. Brandon PQ was there to bang it home past Matias Scholl. And it's three to one. 7.23 left in the second. Just the Lakers' fifth shot, but this one goes into the net. Yeah, just a defensive breakdown for Bemidji State and uh, opportunistic for the Lakers. Just right out in front of the net, hammered it home. Defense uh, just didn't close the gap. Fulmer went behind the net. McLean trying to cover up for it, can't. Just a good pass from behind the net out front. And you got to have your stick ready, and that was in the net quickly, and the Lakers are back within two. Nice shot there by Piku. That's his uh, seventh of the season. Lakers to center, Harrington. Harrington, top of the right circle. Shot blocked by Will Magnuson. I loafed a big hit in the right side corner. Lakers, they'll keep it into the offensive zone. Assisted by number 17, Luke Lewandowski, and number five, Excuse me, number 15, Jared Westcott. That's Piku from Lewandowski and Westcott. Time of the goal, 12.37. Lakers have it in their own end. Out to center. Now deflected in by John Harrington. 6.40 to go here, second period. Will Magnuson to the neutral zone. Knocked down there by Carter Batchelder. Deflected into the zone. Jackson Judding has it for the Beavers. Back behind his own net. Kyle Loaf for Will Magnuson. Pass by Will Magnuson. Deflected. Comes out to center ice. Casper Magnuson hit awkwardly. Lakers come in. A centering pass. Oh, one touch redirect by Lewandowski. Missed the net. And the Beavers race towards center. Picked up by Flamang. Flamang cuts into the right side circle. Peels back. Flamang now dumps it into the right side corner. Behind the net it goes to Carter Jones. Right out in front, a shot to the bread basket of Ethan, uh, Ethan Lagenager. And that turned into an outstanding scoring chance before you could blink your eyes. Yeah, Mitch Wolf coming in from the left point. Got all the way down low and got a point blank opportunity. The only problem is you're so close to the goaltender. So Langenager was able to make the save, but a nifty pass from behind the, uh, the net set Wolf up. Good positioning by Langenanger, and it did not, uh, no rebound, which was fortuitous. I was gonna say before the uh, Lakers scored, this will be, to the best of my knowledge, the first CCHA Mason Cup championship game played on a Friday. Original schedule listed it as Saturday. It's always been a Saturday. Wolf a drive from the top of the right circle right to the glove of Langenegger. So next Friday, a week from last night, will be the Mason Cup championship game. 7 o'clock, I'm guessing, right? 6.30 pregame. Hopefully here at the Sanford Center. Long way to go, though. 5.40 left to go second period. 3-1 Bemidji State. There is no time listed on the CCH's schedule page. Flipped ahead by the Lakers into the offensive zone. Kicked ahead there by Brandon PQ. He scored for Lake State. Looks stuck into the skates of Kyle Loaf. Tries to push it around Harrington. Now PQ's got it. Back for Harrington. Harrington up to the point. Held in there at the point and ripped wide. Eric Martin gets it. Now Will Magnuson has it behind the net. Will fights it over into the corner. Rode tries to push to center. Can't. Deflected right out in front. Whistles just past the right post. Jared Westcott has it behind the net. And then that pass is deflected now out to center ice. Lakers adding some pressure here. They've got a goal in the momentum now. 
Beavers through the neutral zone. Irie deflects. Beavers will change. 4.45 left second period. Beavers three, Lakers one. They're going to move through the neutral zone. To the near side wall, Timo Backus shot. Knocked down by Matias Scholl. Lakers get it back. Feed it up towards the point. That one misfired to Evan Bush. He's going to track it down at center. Knocked into the offensive zone by Lewandowski. He tries to work around Jackson Judding. Judding throws him aside. Beavers cannot clear the zone, however. Held their blue line right. Carrying it down the right side wall for Lake Superior State. This is Rollison. He'll leave it off there for Bushy. Bushy back up top, splits the defense, and it goes all the way up the ice. Ouch, I mean, they really have been uh, having some good puck possession time in the Beavers' zone, but uh, just a bad pass there. Lakers dump it in. Tony Fulmer behind the net. Gets knocked down, puck comes free. Top of the left circle, now a shot, clanked off the post. Goes to the right side wall, flipped down below the goal. Vicen it on the near side wall, Flips it on a backhand up the ice. Austin Jopi in a foot race. Icing waved off. Jopi swats it over here to the near side wall where the Lakers push it up into the neutral zone. Carrying it through is Sasha Teleguin. Bounces it around pole camp. Teleguin, pole camp. Wolf are all back there. Beavers flip it up the near wall. Cannot clear. Blanchett throws it just wide of the net. Goes to the far corner. Picked up by the Beavers, rocketed it up now to the near wall and backhanded out by Vicenin and dumped right back in by Lake Superior State. 3.03 left, it's all Lake State here the last couple of minutes. Beavers to the line, not out. Kept alive now by Milburn. Milburn throws to the right side circle, picked up there by Mitch Wolf. Wolf backs his way out, tosses it off the far wall to center to Carter Jones, he'll carry it into the offensive zone. Stops, tries to feed it across for pole camp. Trickles through to Vicenin. Vicenin with a shot off of the left leg pad there of Langenegger, and the Lakers will toss it ahead to center. Will Magnuson turns the puck over right to Westcott in front, and Westcott sends it wide. Kept alive now by Harrington. Bumped off the leg pads of Matias Scholl. Beavers to the line and out. Lakers flip it right back down low. 2.15 left, second period. Magnuson into the neutral zone. Leighton Road pushes it to the circle. Eric Martin, a quick shot to the chest of Ethan Langenegger, and now some extracurriculars behind the net. I would doubt anything will come of this. Probably not. not Bad to have a little bit of a break here. The Beavers back on their heel, heels. The Lakers definitely picking up the pace. More aggressive in the offensive zone with the four check. Been able to get some offensive puck possession time. Trying to get to back within one here before the uh, second intermission break. 2.04 left to go. Face off left circle. Finally controlled by the Beavers, held in blue line left by Pole Camp. He throws it down in the left corner. That hit a seam in the boards and stopped dead in its tracks. Lakers will flip to center. Eric Martin in between the benches. Benches opposite us. Penalty box to the near side. Launched ahead, rode into the offensive zone. Sends a pass for Eric Martin. Martin on a backhand flips between the circles, looking for Mitch Wolf. Bounced around. Kept alive by Rode. Rode pushes it over to the left side circle. Iria shot. That one's blocked. Picked up now in the corner by Leighton Road. Road walks onto the left side corner, stops back behind the net, tries to carry back towards the corner on the left side and does. Actually carries it all the way up, blue line middle. Tosses on a backhand into the corner, right side for Mitch Wolf. Yes, Leighton Road, leading scorer, blue line middle, throws it into the corner to a defenseman. Beavers keep it alive down below the goal line. Finish up a line change in the process. We've got one minute left here in the second period. Beavers up three to one. Casper Magnuson to the circle. A quick one-timer by Chiddenton to the glove of Langenegger, and he will hang on. Beavers finally able to get some offensive puck possession time after the Lakers are pouring on the pressure the last few minutes. Good puck rotation. They're real good with their body, able to just keep the puck on their stick. Angle away from the defender and try to find a shot. There it was Magnuson from the left faceoff dot. 
into the glove of Langenanger. 27-7 shots on goal in favor of Bemidji State. That is, uh, let's see here, I was gonna say in the second period, that is 16 to four. It's two to one as far as goals here in the third, uh, the second period. Bouncing puck, Kyle Loft tosses it over into the corner. Held blue line left oh. by Connor Milburn. Traffic out in front of Matias Scholl. Another shot from the right side wall. Stick to side by Matias. Up to the point. Shot blocked by Dante Lawson. It will carry to center with 28 seconds left. Dante Lawson, left side wall, carries it down below the goal. Carries it to the near side circle. Backhands it to the end wall. The Lakers send it off to glass but cannot clear it. Not on the first attempt. They turn it over now between the circles and Carter Jones chops it and it goes wide. Eight seconds left here in the period. Lakers just toss it ahead. Held blue line left there by Fulmer. That is gonna do it. For our second period, Beavers lead 3-1. Well, another solid period for Bemidji State, but the Lakers did what they needed to do when they were down by three. They had to get one and they were able to, then they hit the pipe. They've had a couple of other chances. It could very well be a one goal game or even tied, but Bemidji State able to dodge the bullet and then uh, the last couple minutes got to back in, uh, in the swing of things offensively. So a two goal lead headed to the third period here on semifinal Saturday. Brian emails the Paul in that mailbag. Keep the foot on the gas cup, boys. Dan and uh, Judy, 68 BSU grads, walks in the beeves on flow in Fort Myers Beach. And Tyler says it's currently 4.15 in the morning in the Middle East. Wow. BSU alum from 2013. Awesome. End of the second, brought to you by McKinnon Company, distributors of Coors Lights made to chill as Tony Fulmer now joins us outside of the uh, Beaver locker room. Tony, heck of a pass you made up the uh, near side to uh, Eric Martin who finished it uh, there to Kirkland Irie. That puck went 200 feet up the ice in the blink of an eye is that something you are looking to do is get that home run pass or is that just something you looked up and saw that you had the ability to, to, to be successful on that one? Yeah, I mean, we preached uh, to go do some quick ups and uh, against this team, they, they run a 1-3 trap. So to uh, get the puck up quick to the forwards is key. Well, defensively, you guys have been really strong, uh, only giving up eight shots, controlling play, doing real well, but the uh, late got that push there in the uh, second period. What would you say happened? Yeah, I mean, we just got to manage the puck better. Um, I feel like we're trying to be too fancy with things, and we got to just chip it past their D and get it behind them. I asked uh, Eric Martin this this week. I'll ask you, what's it like in this building here the last couple of weeks? It, is, it has just been electric. I mean, this is the time you want to play. It's so much fun out there. I mean, seeing the seeing the fans is is really good. Really good for us. So, best luck. Yep. Thank you. Tony Fulmer joining us outside of the uh, Beaver locker room here in our. Paul Bunning Communications, second intermission. Michigan Tech has already punched their spot into next week's Mason Cup championship game. Will they travel here to the Sanford Center or will they host Lake State? We got 20 minutes to find out. Second period stats on the way are Paul Bunning Communications, second intermission right here on the Beaver Radio Network. Purple, it's not just a color. It represents our state, our home, and our team. At Affinity Plus, we have the experience to help you achieve your financial goals while helping our neighbors in need. It's our purple pride, because banking is what we do, and people is who we are. Affinity Plus, your purple banking people. Named number one credit union in Minnesota by Forbes magazine. What's the best environment to study the environment? At Bemidji State University, it's not in the classroom or in a lab, but in the actual environment, in the fields and in the forests, and on more than 400 lakes within 25 miles of our campus. What can the Northwoods teach you? Find out at Bemidji State University. At Lake Superior State University, we know you are not a number. We know you have thought about your future, 
we know you want the best education. At LSSU, it is our mission to help you succeed. Our programs focus on you through hands-on, engaged learning. That is how we are redefining the classroom. Palmetto Communications second intermission. Beavers lead 3-1. Biss with our hot spring hot tubs of northern Minnesota. Stats through two. Well, the Beavers outshoot the Lakers 16-5 in the second, 27-8 in the first 40 minutes of play. Both teams took a penalty there in the second period, and everybody is unsuccessful. The Beavers 0 for 1 with two shots. The Lakers 0 for 2 with two shots on goal. Faceoffs again doubled up. Bemidji 30-15 in the faceoff dot and block shots evened up at eight. BSU today on the way for you next. It's the Mason Cup semifinals. Beavers three, Lakers one. End of two on the Beaver Radio Network. Carry it up to the point. Vicenin goes cross ice. Will Magnuson chops it behind the net. There's Dante Lawson for Bemidji State. Back up top for Wolf. Wolf tries to throw it down to the far side for Reese Chittenden. Back door, it's tapped in by Jake McLean and the Beavers go up two to nothing. Throw it towards the net. That fourth line, man, they have caught fire. And that's a big goal. Jake McLean able to get it past Langenegger. Hockey is adventure. Hockey is fun. Hockey is belonging. Hockey is life. Hockey is friendship. Hockey is determination. Hockey is teamwork. Hockey is passion. Hockey is family. Hockey is the best. Join. 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 Join the family. For more information, go to BemidjiYouthHockey.org.
continues here today, presented by Paul Bunning Communications. I'm Brian Schultz. The Beaver men's hockey team in the semifinals of the Mason Cup playoffs, while baseball and softball continue their springs. Details next on BSU Today on the Beaver Radio Network. The GigaZone from Paul Bunyan Communications is 10 times faster. Now you can get internet upload and download speeds up to 10 gigabits per second. Plus, you can add GigaZone Blast Wi-Fi featuring Wi-Fi 6 technology to get the best in-home wireless experience. For the fastest internet service for your home or business, choose Minnesota's largest broadband cooperative, Paul Bunyan Communications, powered by the GigaZone. It's right here. Service availability depends upon locations and restrictions may apply. For BSU Today, presented by Paul Bunning Communications, I'm Brian Schultz. The Beaver baseball team is off this week. Start of the year 1-17, 0-8 in the Northern Sun Conference. Beavers will head to Winona State next weekend for a four-game set. Sophomore infielder Jackson Schaefer out of Hastings, Minnesota. Had been leading the team in batting, injured his wrist, only played in one game last weekend at Augustana. Schaefer says the season is still young, and this team can improve on a tough record last year. With the regular season just starting, we still have a lot to show. Um, we played out, we won a game against William Jewell. A lot of the games we put up a lot of runs. Uh, just like last year, we're still in a very competitive league, but I think we have a very good chance to win a lot of more games this year. Beaver softball team heads to Missouri this weekend. They've already played two doubleheaders, so play another doubleheader tomorrow. Beavers will start Northern Sun Conference play next weekend at Southwest Minnesota State. Junior center fielder Alexa Christensen out of Apple Valley says the team needs to use this weekend to get ready for league play next week. Obviously, we didn't really do super great in Florida, but I think if we do pretty good in uh, Missouri, have some good games, our confidence will be much better going against our NSIC um, opponents. Um, obviously, I think our pitchers need to get more confidence. Um, and our batters. Beaver men's hockey team hosting Lake Superior State semifinals of the CCHA Mason Cup playoffs. Beavers swept Ferris last weekend. St. Thomas was upset by Lake State. Beaver senior winger Eric Martin says Lake State plays with pace, something the Beavers will have to contend with tonight. They, I mean, they have a lot of talented forwards. I mean, I mean, up and down their lineup. Uh, even like I was just watching the game on Saturday or on Sunday, the game three against St. Thomas, and like they they just put pace. I mean, so many of their forwards are just skilled and like offensively gifted. So I mean, it's going to test our defense again. And I mean, we went up to the task so far. So hopefully we can shut them down again. Earlier this week, John Sutherland of the Beaver men's basketball team earned Division II Conference Commissioners Association All Central Region Second Team recognition. Had a great season for the Beavers this winter. That's BSU Today, presented by Paul Bunning Communications. I'm Brian Schultz for the Beaver Radio Network. It's time for second period stats presented by Keith's Pizza. Three generations, two convenient locations, and one great pizza.
Thanks to King's Pizza for sponsoring tonight's period stats. Here's tonight's CCHA out-of-town scoreboard. Sponsored by Paul Bunyan Communications. Brought to you by the GigaZone. Get all the fiber optic internet speeds you need up to, or all your devices up to 10 gig. With the GigaZone from Paul Bunyan Communications, it's right here. Paul Bunyan Communications is a proud partner of BSU Athletics and is also Northern Minnesota's Authorized Apple Service Center and PC Repair Center. Paul Bunyan Communications and It's going to do it for our Paul Bunyan Communications second intermission. Paul Bunyan Communications and the Giga Zone. Beavers when they lead after two. What do you suppose that record is, Best? I'm going to go uh, 15 and 3. 15, 1, and 1. Huh. When Lake State trails after 2, 1, 15, and 1. Wow. Exactly the opposite. But anything can happen. That has no bearing on what's going to happen in the next 20 minutes. The Lakers can come out and get a quick goal. This is a whole different hockey game. If you're just joining us, Bemidji State took the lead early in this one. 148 of the first period. Pole camp from Vicenin. Added to it, 732 in the second. McLean from Lawson and Wolf. Then 58 seconds later, got their third goal, did Bemidji State. Irie from Martin and Fulmer. And then at 1237 of the second, it was Piku from Lewandowski and Westcott. And that's how we got to three to one. In between, plenty of opportunities for both teams, particularly Lake in the Lake Superior State in the, uh, you know, that under 10 minutes in the second period after their goal, they, they hit the pipe, they had a couple go wide. Lakers win the faceoff, dump the puck in. Beavers fight it up the near side wall and out to center ice. Lakers right back on the attack. Entering right wall, Connor Milburn spins it over to the left side. Centering pass goes right to the glove of Matias Scholl. 19-31 left third period, Beavers by two. The Lakers, nothing to lose here. Just keep pouring it on. Look like in the, in the second when they were doing so well too, they were they were more concerned about getting the puck to the net rather than taking just taking a shot from anywhere. Left circle face off, controlled by Bemidji State. One by Layton Road up the near side to Kirkland Irie. Back to Kyle Loft. Loft back for Irie out to the neutral zone. Irie through the center circle. Stick handles and lost the puck. Goes right to Roy. Roy goes cross ice. Carrying across now all three lines and flipping the puck in deep. Was Timo Backus. Bouncing puck. Backus will pick it back up. Left side circle. Throws it right off the back of the legs of Mitch Wolf. Centering pass. Whistles right through the blue paint. And is carried to center now by Kirkland Irie. Irie. All sorts of impeding there. Gets it to Leighton Road. Road on a backhand. Rips it Past the uh, glove side, into the end wall, Lakers will clear it. Road right back in on the attack. Road stops, tries to backhand for the middle. Picked up now by Carter Jones, he stick handles, and I think Langenegger poke checked it free as he was stick handling. Either that or he got his skate on it. Lakers flip to center. Dumped in there by Carter Batchelder. Down low, centering pass, goes right out in front. Carter Jones gloves it, drops it at his feet, and chops it over to the far side. Flamang puts it onto the stick of Corcoran. Corcoran up the near side. Carter Jones gets it to center. Vison and Rockets one over. Flamang can't control it. Lakers send it in. Beavers come right back out. Flamang did not get a piece of that. Uh, said that linesman, but this lineman said he did. Vison waved off. Lakers chop it ahead. It comes right in on goal. And Matias Scholl will cover it up with 17.53. Left in the third period. If Bemidji State hosts on Friday, it would be a 7.07 start time. All right, we know that much. If the Beavers win, they would host Michigan Tech. Tech a wild 4-3 win over Minnesota State tonight. Tech scored the tying goal on a penalty shot. 
As Michigan Tech was already on a power play, Minnesota State covered the puck in the crease with a glove hand. That's an automatic penalty shot. And they scored the game winner with 10 seconds left. Just threw it towards the net and hit the end glass, popped right out in front, went off of a Minnesota State defenseman's glove to the goalie's helmet into the net. Just how you draw it up. 10 seconds left to win it. Casper Magnuson, left side corner, circles back. Now throws it around behind the net, past Austin Jopi. Cole Kemp jumps down the wall, tries to corral it, cannot. Lakers out to center ice. Cole Kemp knocks it onto the stick of Kirkland Irie. Irie's own entry, left side wall. Irie goes driving towards the net. Knocked off his stick by Artem Borshaw. Road tries to play it ahead. Stolen away. Dawson Tripp. Tripp, zone entry, lost the puck. Westcott gets it back and rockets it right back into the offensive zone for the Lakers. 16-43 left, third period. Beavers three, Lakers one. Tony Fulmer lost the puck. Carried in now by Tritt. Tritt whistles one through all the way to the near side wall. Beavers pick it up, carrying it to center is Leighton Road. Road left side wall. Carries it into the corner, fires it towards the net. Ethan Langenegger sticks it aside and the Lakers toss to center. Picked up there by Will Magnuson of the Beavers. Shots on goal, 28 to 10. Loft. Near side, Will Magnuson out to the neutral zone. Leighton Road, Road into the offensive zone. Stick snaps in half. Puck trickled in, steered away by Ethan Langenegger. Lakers out to center ice. Into the offensive zone there is Reagan Milburn. Milburn lost the puck. Kyle Loft off the short boards in front of his own bench. That takes some skill. Get the puck to go that high off the short boards. Whipped in by Lake State again. Patrick Satisari behind the net. Tosses to the corner. Carter Jones is there. Pole camp pulls the puck free. Right back for Satisari who leads the charge up ice. Throws through the neutral zone. Bison in deflects it in. Lakers will finish a change. Beavers will as well. Lake State breaking out of their own end. Near side Schweitzer to the neutral zone. Dante Lawson knocks it down. Schweitzer gets it back. Sends it over to the far side. Cam Kungel. Back for Schweitzer. Schweitzer through the neutral zone. Knocked down by Chiddington. Top free Corcoran. Corcoran will get to the red line and rifle it around right corner to left. Chiddington chops it from the left half hole down into the corner. Jake McLean to know where it was. Sees it as Kungle tries to walk out of the corner with it. Now controlled by Batchelder to center. Driven right back in by Will Magnuson. 14-52 left third period. Beavers by two. Holding, blue line right. Jopi chops it down low. Lakers spin it up the near side. Jopi comes to the near side and carries, holds the puck in on this side. Jopi gets it back with a shot. Whistles wide of the stick side. Talk well, that by Austin Jopi. Yeah, talk about winning a battle. He won one over there, he won one over here, and he won one between the circles to get the shot off. Kyle Loft tries to jump up and Get the puck back down low, it came to the point. I believe Jackson Judding was the one that held it in for a moment. Beavers will go off and out on a line change with 14-14 left, third period. To the neutral zone. Lakers' Ross Rollison drives it into the end wall. Lakers give chase, center a pass, hit him on a backhand. Carrying it to the near side wall was uh, Evan Bushy and the Beavers break out four on one. Carrying in Eric Martin, right side circle, drops it back with the drive to the chest of Langenegger. Trickles three to the end wall. Leighton Road back off the far boards to Polkamp. Polkamp makes a move at the blue line. Polkamp down low with a shot deflected wide by Kirkland Irie. Picked up now by Eric Martin down below the goal. Martin carries it all the way up to the left side point. Blue line middle, Martin still with it. Martin now with it in the right circle of shot. That one's turned away by Langenegger as well. Kept alive by Mitch Wolf. Throws it around to the left corner boards. Martin sends it back behind the net. Leighton Road. Road carries it back to the left circle. Spins back to his left. Fires it around to the right side wall. Carter Jones is there. Jones carries to the bottom of the right circle. Back over into the corner. Jones tosses in between the circles. Patrick said, sorry with a shot. Turned away there by Langenegger and cleared to center ice. Knocked down by Flamang. Flamang zone entry again of the shot to the chest of Langenegger again. Off the glass to the line and out to center ice. 
Lakers now have a two on one. Westcott drops it off for PQ. PQ with a shot sprawling over his Matias Scholl to make the save. Held in, blue line right by Westcott. Dumped into the corner, Satisari rockets it around behind the net. Westcott is there, feeds it up top, nobody home. Comes to center ice, here comes Austin Jopi one on two. Jopi cuts into the inside and he lost the puck. Lakers will carry it to center ice. Thrown in wide of the net, hits the end glass, hits the net behind, centered out in front, a chop at there by Harrington. Beavers clear to the wall. Down to the corner goes Jackson Junning. He lost his stick. Picked up by Kyle Loaf behind the net. Loaf tries to walk out in front, lost the puck. Will Magnuson feeds it out to center ice. Whew, take a breath, Schultz. Wow, that is a lot of end to end action. Whew, 12 to play in the third, still three to one. Have you ever seen a four on one? <laughs> That's crazy. Here's a two on one. Magnuson can't settle the puck. Gets it now and carries to the left side corner. Up top it comes, Mitch Wolf, fanned on it. To center, Batchelder. Over to the left side wall. Leighton Road knocks the puck free. Casper Magnuson chips it to center. Beavers will change with 11.30 left here in this third period. Lakers misfiring a headman pass. Loose into the neutral zone. Mitch Wolf has it for Bemidji State. Played back for pole camp, sends it up ahead. Eric Martin taps it the rest of the way up the ice. 35-11, the shots favor Bemidji State. Connor Milburn throws the puck ahead, and Matias will cover it. Matias gets run into. Some more extracurriculars that the men in stripes little, put an end to. A little snow in the face of Matias Scholl there. Came up with a big save as part of that flurry. The Beavers had several chances and then that two on one back the other way and Scholl able to just get a pad on it and the Beavers were able to clear it. Which one of those, Biss, would you like to name our first National Bank save of the game? Because there were about eight of them. <laughs> yeah. Talk to First National about saving for your future. Well, that'd be seven for Langenager and wow. one for Scholl. I'll count just the same, three to one. This could, I mean, boy, what an exciting few minutes of hockey that was. Lakers knock it down with a hand. Rollison, I think, would touch it next himself, so legal. Beavers play it ahead. Blank State on the breakout, fires it up the middle, picked up by Kyle Loaf. Loaf ahead for Erie Vicenin. Vicenin slides the puck ahead now for Flamang, who Sends it around, right corner to left. Carter Jones right back behind the net. Vicenin is there. Vicenin pinned up along the end wall by Cam Kungle. Beavers walk out of the end wall with it. It's Carter Jones flipped down low. Fanning on it is Flamang. He was there all alone. Puck may have got in too tight to him. Picked up now by Jones, a shot. That one deflects, goes off the end glass. Kept alive here on the near side wall and chopped out towards center by Jordan Venegoni. And icing called on Lake Superior State. Wow. I appreciate that there is a full house in here tonight, but why are they doing the yeah. wave? Well, in that last shift, I was surprised the Lakers just let the, the, uh, the uh, middle of the ice be open. Carter Jones took it from the top of the point all the way down to the top, into the, uh, in between the faceoff dots right in the middle of the ice. It's like the sea parted for him. Beavers win the draw, pole camp, stick handles and lost the puck at the blue line. Feeds Casper Magnuson, pushes it to the middle. Jopi's shot deflects, goes to the end wall. Lakers first on it, that's Cam Kungle. This one tossed up the near wall, that's gonna be an icing call on Lake State and they may need a timeout. That's back-to-back -back icing calls with this line out there. 9.46 left in this third period. Yeah, it'd be interesting. I mean, uh, both teams still have their timeouts. Look like they're gonna call it here. Down by two. Hold that and see if they can't get it out and get off the ice here. Face off left circle. Controlled by the Beavers. Mitch Wolf has it now on the right point. Sends it behind the net for Leighton Road. Road won that face off. 
Road pushes it into the right corner. Eric Martin to the left side corner for Kirkland Irie. Irie tosses it back down for Eric Martin in the corner. Martin leaves it for Leighton Road. Road, a little shimmy shake with his hips. Fake going right, trying to come back left. Irie keeps the puck alive now. Irie turns and sends it behind the net. Leighton Road's got it. Road carries to the right side half wall. Feeds Irie, Irie handcuffed with a pass, gets it back, puts it now between the circles. One timer by Martin and hit Langenager, popped up into the air about head high and dropped right back down to his glove. 9.04 left, third period. Somebody's 9.04 away from potentially punching a ticket to the Mason Cup Finals here on the Beaver Radio Network. banking special thanks to acme tools and the acme tools ice crew acme tools is your one-stop shop for contractors homeowners and do-it-yourselfers with over 65 years in the business you can trust the experts and milwaukee and acme to help you do your best work with acme tools and the acme tools ice crew here's tonight's save of the game brought to you tonight by affinity plus federal credit union Thank you to Affinity Plus Federal Credit Union for sponsoring tonight's Save of the Game. Banking is what we do. People is who we are. Beaver hockey fans, it's time to put on those dancing shoes for the Bemidji State Dance Cam. Mike emails the Paul Bunny Net mailbag, says enjoying the broadcast from Mariucci Arena. Shout out to my parents road tripping through Mexico, or New Mexico, excuse me. It says, go Beavs and Gophers. I don't know about the last part of that, Mike. I'm good with the, the last part of that. Brian's a Badger fan, remember. Not in hockey. <laughs> I'm not. I like their football team. I like their basketball but, team. But you never, never liked their hockey well, team. You wouldn't be a Minnesota Gopher fan, though. Never. And I grew up in the city, so... Well, I, grew, long gopher fan. I grew up in L.A. before Wayne Gretzky, so I didn't have a college hockey team to cheer for. San Diego, what, where were you? You weren't in San Diego. L.A.? L.A. UCLA didn't have a hockey team? No. <laughs> Two Beavers collide at the defensive blue line. Some of the Lakers can't get to the puck. Beavers toss it in. Casper Magnuson drops it back. Bouncing puck. Austin Jopi couldn't handle it. Jopi gets it back and fires it into the corner. Lakers there, toss ahead to Westcott. Cross ice pass now over to the far wall. Bouncing puck picked up by Jackson Judding. Eight and a half to go in the third. Beavers three, Lakers one. Flamang from center carries it into the offensive zone. Fires it around the dasher, right side to left. Comes up the near wall, Mitch Wolf can't hold it in. It's offside at the line. 8-14 left to go here, third period. Beavers holding on to a two-goal lead. 36-11 shots on goal for the game. Here in the uh, third period, that is Bemidji State 9-3. If Bemidji State hangs on for the next eight minutes and 14 seconds. I would suggest scooping up tickets as soon as you can before this place gets invaded by Michigan Tech fans. I was trying to think when the last time a championship playoff final was held. Was that the CHA days back the, at the Fieldhouse? Yes. That's the last time a home championship game has been played. So, yeah, it'd be a, be a hot ticket in town if the Beavers can hold on here. Well, the last time Tech came here in the playoffs, they brought their whole band and... Filled a third of the arena. Well, they'll travel, you know they that. They will. They're fired up. They've been chiming in. They might already be leaving Houghton driving to here. <laughs> well, not quite yet. They're holding out hope for our Laker comeback here. 7.50 to go. Neutral zone face off. 
Meissenen and Roy. Roy gets a pat on the backside from the linesman. That's linesman talk for, sorry, didn't mean to fake you out like that. <laughs> Lakers control, Westcott, or excuse me, Blanchett, dumps the puck in. Mitch Wolf after it along the uh, end wall, tries to feed it over for Polkamp. Polkamp tied up along the end wall now by two Lakers. Lakers come away with it and it's stolen right back. Now by Mitch Wolf, who tosses that one into the penalty box. He's trying to chip it high and out. Lakers won't be able to change because of that. Face off to down into the Bemidji zone again here. Offensive zone face off for the Lakers. That CHA championship game at the John Glass Fieldhouse technically was quote unquote neutral site. <laughs> predetermined that BSU was going to host it regardless of their spot in the standings. Lakers win the draw. Send one just wide to the left side post. I'm not sure how much Matias saw of that. That's when Robert Morris beat Niagara in the one semi. And they made them play a third place game and Dave oh. Burkholder, I couldn't even find him for a pregame interview. Yeah, there is no third place game. Yeah, that was a bad good reason. That was a bad idea. Beavers able to get the puck into the offensive end. Lake State Rockets went up the far wall. It was deflected, they say, by John Harrington, so icing is waved off. Driven around up the near wall by Will Magnuson. Nobody in green and white there, and it's icing on Bemidji State. 6:42 left here, third period. Beavers three, Lakers one. Looked like Jenning got a piece of it, but he was on the Beavers' side of the red line, still icing. The Beavers uh, content to just try to get it out. Clean Take it from there. Clean face-off win for the Lakers from the left side. Shot blocked. Casper Magnuson just flutters it up into the neutral zone. Bring it back now into his own end, Timo Bacchus. Big hit along the end wall. Lakers, though, able to carry to center ice. Two on three. Lakers push it ahead. Here comes Rollison. Ross Rollison with a shot, that one deflects. I don't think that ever got in on Matias. Near side, picked up by Casper Magnuson. Casper. Ahead for Jopi, that line looked gassed. Jopi crossed the red line and flipped it ahead. Beavers with a wholesale line change. Lakers up the near wall, it was deflected. No icing, Matias Scholl stops it behind the net. Beavers toss it ahead. Icing waved off as it didn't get far enough. I think that hit a stick in, in the neutral zone. Took a lot of the momentum off of that puck. Can we talk about science? No. I think that's called inertia. And there's geometry involved too. Well, geometry is not math. Oh, I would disagree. <laughs> 5-26, left here in the third. Beavers 3-1. Lakers have it, top of their right circle. Shot blocked there by Patrick Satisari. Beavers will steal it, it's Eric Martin. Martin flips the puck ahead to himself. Martin one-on-one, -on -one stops, tries to hit a trailer. Problem is, there wasn't one there yet. Trailer was late in the road, but he was a little late to the party. Good anticipation by Martin intercepting that behind the back pass to the point that could have been worse for the Lakers. That can turn into a breakaway pretty quick. Pass to the neutral zone, knocked around. Beavers tap it into the offensive zone. Cam Kungle was there. Back to the neutral zone. Weissenden fights it onto the uh, stick of Flamang, who backhands it high off the glass. I don't know if that could have gone any higher off the glass before it hit the net. Clock keeps rolling, 4.33 left third period. Beavers by two. Pass through the neutral zone to Harrington. Pinned up along the wall, Mitch Wolf pulls it free. Polkamp misfires on a pass. Wolf gets it back, flips through the neutral zone, picked up there by Roy. Roy circles, cuts through the center circle, now cuts into the middle, thrown down low by Jared Westcott. Oof. Loose side of the net. I believe that was Ross Rollison. Beavers just pick it up and launch it ahead. And it's an icing call with 4.03 left, third period. Beavers lead by two, and if I know Tom Serratori, he's taking a timeout. 
Well, and that uh, was there a little miscommunication when that came off the end boards. It ended up going right in front of the net as two defensemen converged on the puck. The first one let it go. And I think the second one thought the first one was gonna pick it up. Unfortunately, no Laker there. Weaver's able to clear it. No time out here. This group of forwards hasn't been out there that long. We play on. Lakers win the draw. Send it to the half wall. Beavers will knock it down there. Casper Magnuson gets the red line. Softly flips it into the offensive zone. Face planting himself was Rollison. Somehow the puck comes right back to him. Slid ahead. Teleguin chops it into the offensive zone. 3.40 to go. Lakers down two. We'll keep our eyes on Ethan Langenegger. Still in the net as of now. Casper Magnuson fights it off of the near wall out to center ice. Rollison bouncing puck through the neutral zone. Tony Fulmer will go get it down below the goal line. Flipped ahead there by Kirkland Irie. He scored tonight. Zone entry for Eric Martin. He's got it knocked off of his stick, however. Batchelder to the neutral zone. Lost it. Beavers pick it up. Irie. Irie carries it into the offensive zone. Just slides it into the left side corner. Beavers go off on a change here with 2.53 left. Lakers right back on the attack. Here comes Connor Milburn. Fires one towards the end wall. Pole camp off the glass and in the Laker bench. <laughs> Almost. If he could get that up and over, it would have been a two on one for the Beavers, but it goes into the stands. Face off to the right of Scholl. 2.43 left to go, and either the uh, Lakers are calling timeout or they are pulling the goalie. They are pulling the goalie. Empty net, 2.43 left to go. Beavers lead it by two. Jackson jutting, clean faceoff win. Connor Milburn, Lakers keep the puck alive with the extra attacker on. Westcott, right circle. Throws one towards the middle, that one hit traffic. Came right back to him, puck loose out in front. Chopped at, Matias Scholl's got it. Take it back, that's the first National Bank save of the game. Wow, that puck just bouncing all over the place and went to a Laker right in front of the net. And Scholl able to make the save and hold on. That thing hit, that skate went up in the air, was batted down out of the air, right into the stick of Harrison Roy and point blank in front. Roy's hurt, he's limping off and going to the bench. Referee didn't want to let the change happen. Like that's an injury, so Brandon PQ is allowed on. Left circle face off, 228 left, Laker net empty. Lakers win the draw, bouncing puck between the circles, chopped at, it went off the chest of Matias. To the end wall it goes, and Kyle Loeb spins it around and it comes out to center ice. Flamang tackled, penalty coming, Flamang rips it just wide of an empty net. Picked up now by Carter Jones, it's touched by Lake State. The Lakers will go a man down with 2-11 left. Absolutely had to tackle him. Oh, well, yeah, he had to tackle him. It's 4-1. I mean, you can't blame him for taking the penalty. Blanchett and what is the Flamang rule? What is the rule up? with an empty net? If the referees think you I mean, he would have been able to shoot 100% denied a chance for a shot, they can award a goal. Well, I don't know that that necessarily fit the bill. No, I wouldn't say that was 100%. He was going to win the battle, but you can see him trying to interfere a little bit, and then he was going to get beat. Not, a, ba not a bad play. Hunter tail power, power play for the Beavers. I mean, you got to do it. Cam Kungle to the box, two minutes for holding. There's two minutes, 11 seconds left. With an offensive zone faceoff, Langenegger has to come back on. Faceoff win there for Jackson jutting back for Kyle Loft. Loft over to the right side wall for Polkamp. Polkamp sends it down for Leighton Road, who spins away from pressure. Feeds it back for Judding. Judding and Road playing catch. Back up to the half wall right side. Polkamp fires it around behind the net to the near side wall. Martin settles the puck, sends it right back behind the net. Leighton Road will carry it into the right side corner. Down low for Jackson jutting. 
Minute 43 left, just keep cycling the puck down low. Can eat up a lot of clock. Judding feeds it out in front, stick to side there by Lake State. Chopped at, blue line, middle of the Beavers, keep it in the offensive end. Right out in front, a shot, Martin, the save. And Lagenegger does not give up a rebound, and Eric Martin was looking for it, and it just wasn't there. Well, he redirected it, that's all he could. Lagenegger stood his ground because the Beavers got a turnover. It was a, like a mini two-on-one. Nifty little pass to get it to him from Judding. Smart hockey IQ play there by Eric Martin. You're on a power play late in the game up by two. Don't go chopping for a loose puck that isn't there and then you get called for a penalty. Lakers win the draw, Rocket one out. Harrington in a foot race, Matias Scholl wins the race. Beavers get it back to Kyle Loft. Loft pushes it behind the net. Pole camp. Off the boards, out to center ice, Layton Road. Cross ice to Eric Martin. Zone entry, right side wall. Martin lost the puck behind the net. Judding, it jumped over his stick. Picked up by the Lakers, tossed ahead. Road gloves it, drops it. Chopped off of his stick. Beavers get it back from the red line. It's driven in by Jackson Judding. 52 seconds left. Lakers down three to one. Beavers on a power play at for 37 seconds. Lakers toss to center. It's deflected in by Connor Milburn. There goes Langenegger for an extra attacker again. Net empty. Polkamp gets it to Kyle Loft. Loft slides it ahead to center. It's picked up there by Lake State. And Ross Rolison is offside at the line with 35 seconds left. Well, Lakers just have to do what they can do to try to get a goal here. But uh, obviously ideal for Bemidji State on the power play. So it's five on five with the empty net. 35 seconds time is uh, on their side here for Bemidji State. That's not a lot of time to get two goals. Face off at center, Erie Weissenden wins it. Pushed ahead, Flamang too far out of his reach. Westcott gets it, launches it up the middle of the ring. 25 seconds to go, Beavers by two. Beavers push it ahead, Weissenden cuts towards the outside, carries it into the offensive zone, backhand flips just wide of the net. Comes over here to the near side wall, 13 seconds left. Carter Jones into the middle, Bison, empty net goal, exclamation mark. Bemidji State will host the CCHA Mason Cup Finals next Friday night. Well, they were the better team tonight. I mean, they uh, thoroughly uh, outplayed the Lakers in the first period, able to withstand the uh, last five minutes of the second when the Lakers got within two. And they get the empty netter and will host their first CCHA Mason Cup Championship game here in Bemidji State history. Next Friday night, first time since the CHA days back in the 2000s that they've hold it, will host a championship game. Langenegger back in for the last 10 seconds. Lakers will win the draw and just let the clock run out. Husky fans, you can uh, head on over. We'll see you Friday night. Sounds of the game there from the Hearing Wellness Center in Bemidji. Enjoy better hearing. You just heard the Beavers win the semifinals. 4-1 our final score here tonight. They gave up 14 shots. Hard to, uh, hard to lose when you're playing uh, that solid a defense. Now, quality over quantity sometimes. They had some quality opportunities, did the Lakers, but Few and far between. Lake State was a seven seed, Bist. Did that look like a seven seed? Well, Just they, no difference top to bottom in this league this year. No, and, and you know, once they were able to get that goal, they had that burst, and if they could have just gotten another one, even all the way through the third period, they gave themselves a chance. There's, you know, two goal lead in hockey is so precarious. If they would have gotten a goal somewhere along that length, that time between the second, the first one, they, they could have made it a different game, but Bemidji State pretty stubborn. Matias Scholl came up big <laughs> despite having uh, just 14 shots on goal. It could have been a whole lot different there in the uh, particularly late second and some of the third had he not stopped some of those shots. Our Fozzie Smoking Barbecue game winning goal tonight. It was Jake McLean's, the Beavers' second goal. It was the first goal of the second period, the first goal 
of uh, back to back goals, 58 seconds apart. Fozzie's Smoking Barbecue, Bemidji's Best Barbecue. Paul Bunning Communications post game show on the way for you next. Right here, it's the Beaver Radio Network. Back here at the uh, Sanford Center, our Paul Bunning Communications post-game show. Paul Bunning Communications powered by the GigaZone. Did not have a replay review tonight. If we would have, it would have been brought to you by the Keg and Cork, home of the half-off, apps and taps, happy hour. And I mean, everyone's a little dinged up this time of year, but the injury report is clean as can be for BSU. Yeah, perfect timing for yeah. that. And that brought to you by the Glass Doctor, a neighborly company. This, the... Uh, I, I, I tip my hat to Lake State. Um, boy, they, considering they had 14 shots in the game, they were in it to the bitter end. Yeah, they, they really were. And, uh, you know, it was important for them to get, obviously, when they were down by three, to get that next one if they could in the second, and they did. Then they hit the pipe, if you remember, after that. Missed wide on a point-blank opportunity in, in, the, in the second. Then, of course, we saw the two-on-one save uh, down on the other end after the four-on-one for Bemidji State. That was uh, three, four minutes of uh, exciting playoff hockey back-to-back, end-to-end. Um, but, uh, yeah, for as little of shots on goal that they got, um, it was uh, more interesting than it needed to be maybe from Bemidji State's fans, uh, standpoint, but you got to give the Lakers credit. They weren't going to go down without a fight, and they made it interesting right to the end. It's a cliche in hockey. It's hard to end someone's season. It's said every year because it's true. Yeah. Well, you got nothing else to play for, right? Nope. I mean, the Lakers had nothing to lose in that final 20 minutes. They threw everything at it. And, uh, and had a couple of opportunities. Bemidji State had some opportunities to maybe make everybody breathe a little easier. Uh, couldn't do it until the uh, very end when they got the empty netter, but uh, certainly was a very entertaining hockey game tonight. Uh, league protocols, there is a 10 minute cooling off period for all student athletes and uh, coaches. So we won't get Coach Saratori as quickly as we normally would, uh, but I would expect him uh, before he goes into his, his press conference. Uh, this, what do you have for our final hot spring hot tubs of northern Minnesota stats? Well, in the third period, the Beavers outshoot the Lakers 11 to 6, 38 to 14. Uh, in this one, as far as shots on goals go, there were two penalties in the game against both teams. They were 0 for 2 on the power play, and both got, uh, well, the Beavers got three shots on goal on their power play. Power plays, two for the Lakers. 
Faceoffs won. That got more even in the third period. That might have helped the Lakers' cause, too, why they were able to stay in it a little bit more. They were trailing significantly after the first and second, but 37-26 faceoffs in favor of the uh, Be Beavers tonight. And then the Beavers blocked uh, several shots there as the Lakers tried to get within one. They have 14 block shots to 10 for the Lakers tonight. Again, those are our uh, final stats tonight from Hot Spring Hot Tubs of Northern Minnesota. Take the first step towards finding the perfect hot tub. Uh, Dean and Charlotte watching in in uh, Crestview, Florida tonight. They emailed the Paul Bunny Net mailbag. John and Georgia emails back. Says, love the energy the boys came with. Also saw the uh, last period of Tekken Mankato. Wild finish there. And in the uh, Beavs out of the championship game on uh, Friday night. It'll be a 7-0-7 faceoff. The winner... We'll get the only bid for the CCHA in the NCAA tournament. Yeah. Uh, the Beavers uh, right now, uh, I shouldn't say right now. They entered the day 31st in the pairwise. Right. Uh, Michigan Tech has come charging as of late. They're now 35th in the pairwise uh, going into tonight. So Michigan Tech, a 4-3 wild finish in, uh, in Houghton against Minnesota State Mankato. Penalty shot goal tied it. And a puck off the glove hand of a Maverick. From the end wall, out in front of the net, hit the glove, hit the goalie's helmet, and into the net. It's a weird sport. Strange things can happen. And uh, what a way for the, uh, the Huskies to win it and advance to come here next week. I'm going to need some clarification because the league's schedule now does say 6.07 Central Time. So. Oh, no, don't make it any conf more confusing. <laughs> 6.07 on a Friday, that would be out that, of sorts. That would be But tickets, yes. I would say, are on sale, right? I mean, yes. they, right now, you can, if you're still here in the building and listening, you can go get your tickets for next Friday night. Um, and I believe season ticket holders have until sometime Monday to get theirs before their seats are free for others to take. So get your tickets now. This is the hottest ticket in town. It's been, what, at least 15 years since the, uh, there's been a championship game held here in Bemidji for uh, men's hockey. So you want to be here. Okay, and that one, BSU didn't get to 500 until they won the championship game. And didn't they win it in overtime? In overtime yeah. against Robert Morris. Yes. And then uh, where did they go play? Did they play Denver was that their f was that no. the first? D then they went and played Wisconsin. No, that was that's uh, how many NCAA tournaments we've been to. That was Fort the, Wayne it was the next one. Uh, it was one in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. Oh, uh, yeah. beat Notre Dame. Yeah, I went to the Frozen Four and then four. beat Cornell to uh, get to the Frozen Four and lost to Miami. All right, that's the it's last. Been that long? Yeah, it has. That's been a long time. Well, this will be the second. CCHA Mason Cup championship game in the last three years for the Beavers. Right. The last one was the goofy finish in Mankato. Right. A couple of years ago. Yes. Where they had to call everybody back out onto the ice. That won't happen again. I promise you that. <laughs> yeah. Well, thankfully, we didn't have to worry about any of that or overtime. That's m even more nerve wracking when it's this time of year. True. Again, uh, Michigan Tech 4 3 today over Minnesota State and Bemidji State a 4 1 win here over Lake State. The fourth one scored with the empty net. We'll uh, get you our Pet Zone three stars of the game here momentarily as uh, Tom Serratori is now joining us uh, outside of the uh, Beaver locker room. Tom, congratulations. That was a wildly entertaining game to watch. No, it was. There was a lot of things going on, and it was got dicey for a while. They're just stretching guys right and left, and we were getting trapped on the wrong side of the man and the wrong side of the puck at times, and we, we made it hard on ourselves. But uh, it's hard to, you know, it's sometimes it's just hard to stay above guys all night. Well, nice to get that first goal early in the game yeah. for you guys, right off that draw. And uh, Eric, man, he's got a shot. That thing didn't stay on his stick long. No, he's got a missile. He's got a missile, and uh, and he can he can score like that. And uh, I mean, they got out too. I, actually, their guy got out. Um, to, uh, he just did. He just didn't go stick on puck, but their guy actually got out and uh, and uh, uh, Poli just got it by him. He took uh, like a step or two inside. What did that gain him? Probably just a little shoot, different shooting. Is that what he did? I did he just didn't shoot. He went. He took one step on. Yep. Yeah. You know, it just gives him a little better shooting angle, and that's what he, he was. What he's probably trying to do at that particular time. He's just probably trying to miss the guy coming out on coverage. 
Well, you get back-to-back -back goals in the second period to help stretch the lead. That uh, third goal, what a play. I mean, that thing was up 200 feet pretty quickly. Tony got the uh, pass up to Eric and then a nice little touch pass to Kirkland. I don't know if you could draw it up any better. No, it was a nice play. It was a nice play, and uh, it was nice going up 3 nothing. Gave us a little cushion. Uh, boy, the third period had so many wild stretches. There was a, I don't know, two-and-a-half, three-minute stretch where it was just odd man rush after odd man rush. You had a four on one. I don't know if I've ever seen a four on one. Uh, and back the other way it goes to a two on one. If that didn't get everyone in this building into well, this game. Well, it's hockey. It's crazy. <laughs> and that, we talked about it. We said, don't look for number four. Like we were, In the second period, we were looking for number four. I go, you don't need to look for number four. Number four will find you. It'll punch you right in the nose, you know, because they got to take chances. So you, you just got to be smart. You got to be smart and stay, stay above your guys, and you'll, be, you'll, you'll get chances. Well, they didn't get a lot of shots through, but the ones they did were pretty high quality. Matias came up with big some big time. saves for you. Oh, big time, Biss. It was... Uh, no, I was chewing my fingernails. <laughs> <laughs> when you look up at that stat chart, uh, though, Tom, and it says 14 shots, you're like, wow, did they defend pretty darn well. As, as a start to finish, you guys, yes, you would like some things to happen better, but if you can limit a team to 14 shots, you got to be doing a lot of good things, don't you? Well, you, you do, and you're taking care of the puck. You're playing in the offensive zone. There's a plethora of things you're doing. Well, first time uh, there'll be a championship game hosted here since, uh, what, the Frozen Four year, Tom. So yeah. hopefully you can pack the crowd here next Friday night. Oh, it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, there's a lot of juice in the building tonight. What, what's the energy been like uh, for you on the bench awesome. these last couple awesome. of weeks? Awesome, awesome, awesome. I, I thought it was good for Ferris and for the first round, and typically people don't draw great in the first round. And uh, um, I just, you know what, the Mankato series, uh, I thought the Ferris series had good juice, and we had unbelievable juice tonight. The, uh, the fans can help. Big time. Let's pack this place next week, folks. Okay, guys, thank you. Tom Saratori, head coach of the Beavers here. Beavers winners in the CCHA Mason Cup semifinals. Final score of 4-1. to one. That's at 11 straight now. Ooh. I mean, it's just been a crazy ride for these guys. I mean, from a... Well, nine straight wins. 11 with points if you counted points in the playoffs, I guess, but... Um, the Augustana loss. Was the last one. Was the last loss. February like third. That was a long time ago. Yeah. What, yes. a, what a run. And they've been able to keep it going. I like their energy in the first period. I mean, they, they, that helped because, of course, a week ago we remember what happened. So I really liked how they came out. And it doesn't hurt you got that quick goal. But uh, even the whole first period, I mean, you could just tell they were they were firing on all cylinders again. Well, uh, come back with our Pet Zone three stars of the game. Beavers winners tonight. 4-1 our final. We'll wrap up the Paul Bunny Communications postgame show next on the Beaver Radio Network. we know you are not a number. We know you have thought about your future. We know you want the best education. At LSSU, it is our mission to help you succeed. Our programs focus on you through hands-on, engaged learning. That is how we are redefining the classroom. You've heard the news. The demand for healthcare professionals has never been stronger. But did you know that healthcare means more than nursing and the pay has never been better? In two years or less, an affordable, accessible education from Northwest Technical College can give you the training you need for a well paying, in demand job in nursing, dental assisting, healthcare administration, community health work, gerontology, and more. Start the path toward your dream job in healthcare. Northwest Technical College. Learn today, earn tomorrow.
Back here at the Sanford Center, Bemidji State wins 4-1 tonight in the semifinals of the Mason Cup semifinals. They will host Michigan Tech. I have confirmation, 7.07 Friday right. night. Okay. This what we have for our Pet Zone three stars of the game, Bemidji's best choice for pet supplies. We're going to give the uh, number three star of the game to the goaltender, Mart Matias Scholl. He had to come up big a couple of times, even though, again, he, he only faced 14 shots. He stops 13 of them, but of the 13 he stopped, probably two or three were of the spectacular variety, and it would have been a whole different hockey game if it wasn't for those saves. So we'll give uh, Matias Scholl the number three star of the game. Two star. We're going to give that one to Kirkland Irie. Nifty handwork. Actually, uh, you know, the whole play was uh, spectacular, but he finished it in fine fashion by moving the puck from his back end to his forehand and flipping it up over Langenager for the third goal and the much needed insurance goal there in the second period, his eighth of the season. Kirkland Irie, the number two star of the game. And the number one star. We're going to give that to Yuri Vison, and he set up the first goal of the game by winning a clean faceoff back to Eric Polkamp, who scored. And then he, I guess, bookended it and uh, ended up getting the goal of the empty, the empty net goal. So it's a two-point night, but Vison was all over the ice tonight. I mean, he had a couple of really good scoring opportunities, just a hard worker, and so we'll give Yuri the number one star of the game. Vison in the one, Kirkland Irie the two, and Matias Scholl the three, our pet zone three stars of the game tonight. Tickets, Sanford Center box office and Ticketmaster.com. Friday night, 7.07, .07, Beavers and the Michigan Tech Huskies. That should be a whale of oh, a game. It's going to be a good game. I mean, there, it's always a battle with uh, with the Huskies. So, and of course, they're going to they're coming in off uh, you know they're flying three high. in a row big wins. You got it. It's going to be a showdown, and you want to get your tickets and be here to be a part of it. You certainly do. Uh, more info at BeaverRadioNetwork.com. Again, our final score here tonight: Beavers four, Lakers one. Till Friday night. Good night, everyone. Shot by Pole Camp. Tucked it underneath the bar and in. Beavers lead 1 0. Clean face off win. Pole Camp takes two strides towards the middle of the rink and roofed it. Well, that's what a clean face off win can do. It didn't take long. Drop of the puck, back of the net. Beavers up by one. Carry it up to the point. Weissenden goes cross ice. Will Magnuson chops it behind the net. There's Dante Lawson for Bemidji State. Back up top for Wolf. Wolf tries to throw it down to the far side for Reese Chittenden. Back door. It's tapped in by Jake McLean, and the Beavers go up two to nothing. Throw it towards the net. That fourth line, man. They have caught fire, and that's a big goal. Jake McLean able to get it past Langenegger. Corcoran. To the near side, Fulmer rockets one ahead for Eric Martin, tosses a pass down low. Oh, and Irie shoots and scores! Irie just chips it up over the shoulder of Ethan Langenegger, and the Beavers are up by three. 200 feet in about five seconds. That pass was all the way up the ice, and what a great touch pass by Martin, and backhand to forehand and flip for Irie. And the Beavers go up by three. Comes over here to the near side wall. 13 seconds left. Carter Jones into the middle. Bison empty net goal. Exclamation mark. Bemidji State will host the CCHA Mason Cup Finals next Friday night.